to, uh, at this time, uh, have everybody stand and we'll do the play. <laughs>
participating in due diligence, hearing out the boards and uh, various uh, uh, department heads uh, on the uh, budget item. So with that, uh, I'm going to give you a list of people uh, who are not uh, residents of the town uh, but may uh, sit on the uh, floor of the town meeting for purposes of either participating, you know, their official role, the folks up here on the stage, uh, or may speak to a particular question. Uh, unless they're up on the stage here with me, uh, they ought to be in the non-voter section uh, until we get to the particular article. So, they are as follows. Uh, uh, Michelle Hill, the treasurer of collector, as I've said. Uh, Town Council Ben Coyle, uh, David Riccardi, our uh, Police Department Chief, uh, Detective Sergeant Landis, uh, also uh, South Hill Police Department, Chris Ferria from the DPW, Jen Willard, Steve Presnell from the uh, Regional School District, Art Waller, our Building Inspector, Cindy Sullivan, Council on Aging Director, uh, Carol Delstein, uh, here she is now, uh, and then Rich uh, Hubbard and Aline Pederoy from the Franklin Land Trust, I believe they're up in the uh, back of the room. Thanks. Uh, are there any other non-voters that are sitting here with us tonight that we need to uh, get approved at this time? I've got one other name who may. Uh, yes, ma'am. Diane, we're the director of the South Dakota Library. Okay. Do you have that name? Uh, so, anybody else? With that, I'm going to ask for a motion to accept those people. No move. And second. Okay. Uh, all in favor of allowing those people to participate but not to vote in the town meeting, please say aye. 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 So I think we've handled all of the uh, preliminaries. I'm not going to go through kind of the ground rules for the meeting. I see a lot of familiar faces out there. If you're unfamiliar with anything, if you think I've uh, not uh, followed the proper procedure here, you can call a point of order, uh, and we'll stop the meeting at that point, and we'll hear your point of order, uh, and, uh, and then I will rule on it. It's uh, uh, not beyond me to uh, uh, get to do something or, or uh, take something out of order or something, so I'm um, certainly welcome that this is your meeting. I want to be sure that you're comfortable uh, with the process and procedure and you don't feel like, uh, you know, uh, it, it's being run in an improper sort of way. Uh, I would uh, uh, urge you, I'm going to kind of uh, um, try to expedite some things. So go, go fairly crisp on a number of these articles. If at any time you feel like going too fast or you need more time or something like that, please, please speak up. Uh, but if I don't see hand raise, hands raised on things, we're going to proceed along at a pretty good clip uh, because otherwise uh, we could be here uh, very late tonight. So again, uh, I'm not doing that to, to uh, you know, take away your opportunity to participate. I'm doing that to kind of keep things moving here uh, and make for an efficient meeting. So help me uh, with the right uh, pace to get through that. Now one thing, I do have tellers appointed tonight, and uh, if we have to count some votes, and I think there's several articles where that will be necessary, um, but it, it's a pet peeve with me. Uh, if you think that the vote was counted improperly here tonight, I want you to, uh, before we go on to the next article, raise your hand uh, and ask for the vote to be clarified right then and there. Uh, and I, I know I'm talking to uh, the wrong people here, but uh, don't don't wait till next week and call up the uh, newspaper or the pulse line or whatever and tell them that uh, uh, I, I was not counting the vote properly. The right time to, to deal with that is right here and now, not uh, later on, and that is within your rights. Uh, as uh, uh, citizens and town meeting uh, participants uh, to challenge the vote. So uh, we need to do that here, uh, not uh, outside the meeting. So anything else uh, we'll deal with as we go along. I know a lot of people think they've got great voices. Uh, they could go on, you know, uh, uh, American Idol and, and 
sing without a microphone, but we're going to try to use the microphones tonight. We've got these uh, two great uh, uh, high school students here uh, to help us with that. So they will run the microphone back to you. The uh, fact of the matter is probably three-quarters of us do not have a voice that's loud enough to be heard throughout the room uh, without amplification. So uh, wait a moment for the microphone to get to you and, uh, and then speak. So with that, uh, I think we have covered the preliminaries, and I'm going to again recognize uh, town clerk uh, Michelle Hill for the reading of the town meeting. Annual Town Election, Tuesday, May 9, 2017, at 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. at the Southwick Town Hall, 454 College Highway for Precincts 1, 2, and 3. Annual Town Meeting, Tuesday, May 16, 2017, at 7 p.m. at the Southwick Regional High School, 93 Beacon Hills, in the auditorium. To either of the constables of the Town of Southwick and the Ham County of Hamden, Mr. Moderator, I move that to dispense with reading the warrant in its entirety and act on the articles individually. Do we have a second? A uh, motion made and seconded to uh, dispense with the reading of the entire warrant this time, act on each article individually. <coughs> All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, those opposed, say no. Given under our hands as said Southwick this 28th day of April, the year of our Lord 2017, signed by the Select Board, Russell S. Fox, Chairman, Doug Moulton, Vice Chairman, Joseph J. T. Clerk, pursuant to the within warrant, I have notified and warned the inhabitants of the town of Southwick by posting up attested copies of the same at three public places in said town seven days before the day thereof, as with a directive. Signed by the Constable William Terry Jr. and myself, Michelle. Okay, thank you, Michelle. Uh, and with that, uh, we're going to go to the articles. Article 1 uh, has already been uh, disposed of. That was the uh, annual town election last week, and uh, so we can move on. I'm going to take articles 2, 3, 4, and 5 as a group, unless I hear objection. Uh, they are housekeeping articles that we do every year. Uh, the first is uh, to publish the annual town report, uh, copies of which are out on the table. Uh, the third one is to uh, instruct the select uh, board to appoint minor officers. Uh, article four is to see if the town uh, to both to authorize the select board to sell or trade obsolete equipment. And the fifth one uh, allows them to accept grants from uh, other government entities, private entities, and so forth, uh, and of course, uh, doing business during the year. So, articles two, three, four, and five, do I have a uh, motion to bring those on to the town meeting? So moved. And a second. Second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion, question, or comment on articles two through five? Hearing none, of, uh, yes, sir. Please rise and we'll get your microphone. Hello? I just have a quick question. On. Uh, if you uh, name and street, please. Oh, sorry. My name is Chris Vanas. I live on Berkshire Avenue in South <laughs> um, Article 4 um, who determines what is obsolete. Equipment before it needs to be sold or traded, and how does that process uh, take place? I mean, I drive a car with like close to 200,000 miles on it, and it still does a good job for me. The department heads will make recommendations to the selectmen, and then they would follow the statutes of the law on how things are disposed of, and sometimes they're bid out through the newspaper and they're, they're advertised. Um, for being sold, traded, or or which of those in as far as following statutes, what statutes are written regarding you know what, what is obsolete? Uh, chapter thirty B sets forth the uh, the thresholds on how that works and it's updated periodically by the state. So in other words there's a criteria set up by the state for uh, what constitutes obsolete uh, equipment. 
Yeah, and how it's disposed of. Okay, thank you. Am I correct that that's a public process that it yes. has to be? Yep. Any any uh, things put out in bid have to be publicly announced that uh, uh, it's a transparent process. Is that fair to say? Uh, anything else on articles two through five? Seeing none, I'm going to call the vote. All in favor, please say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. And those opposed, say no. Uh, carried uh, by a vote. Uh, article 6, uh, also a housekeeping uh, article, uh, but requires a two-thirds vote, so I'm going to handle it separately. To say if the town will vote to authorize the town treasurer with the approval of the Board of Selectmen to issue bonds, notes, and certificates of indebtedness for a period of not more than two years in accordance with Massachusetts general laws or take any other action requested by the select board. Uh, again, I'll take a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion on Article 6? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Uh, those opposed, say no. Everything else. Now we're on to Article 7. Uh, and I am not going to read uh, all these articles in their entirety uh, tonight. Uh, we'll basically kind of give you a, uh, a summary. The Finance Committee Chair, uh, for those which involve money, uh, will give you a line item total. And uh, uh, there are copies of the board available to you to uh, move forward on the a presumption that you have read these articles and you can have them in So, Article 7, the state of the town will appropriate $238,000 or any other amount to pay costs of purchasing and equipping a full-size multi-use dump truck for the use of the Department of Public Works and for the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto. To determine whether this amount shall be raised by taxation, transfer from available funds, borrowing, or otherwise, or any other action. And uh, that's requested by the select board. And uh, what's the finance committee recommendation? Finance committee recommends our in the amount of $238,000 for a full size dump truck. So, can we get an explanation on the dump truck, please? Okay, Randy, okay, Randy's going to do that, okay? Randy Brown, 95 Fred Jackson Road, TPW Director. Uh, we're looking to replace a uh, 1996 GMC Top Kick. It has 85,000 plus miles on it. Uh, these vehicles are used for uh, snow plowing and general uh, heavy equipment um, um, we're, we're removing of uh, sand, stone, rock, whatever we need to move. Uh, this truck is, is aging. It's uh, 19, 20 plus years old. Has issues with uh, electrical um, or rust, um, uh, brakes, uh, and dump body. Uh, we're looking at uh, putting about nine thousand dollars into that truck. We have to keep it on the road. So at this point, we'd like to replace that truck with a new vehicle. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Randy. Uh, at this time, uh, we've got three articles here that have a typo in them. And uh, because they involve borrowing, uh, we need to formally amend them. And you're, you're going to get a kick out of the, you know, why we're amending it, because it's like real, literally a matter of one letter. Uh, but uh, so at this time, I'm going to recognize the chair of the Board of Selectmen to amend uh, Article 7.
instructed that we need to read the motion. Uh, and so we will do that, and then we will amend uh, uh, the motion. And just bear with us uh, as we go through this. So the motion, that the sum of $238,000 is appropriated to pay costs of purchasing and equipping a full-size multi-use dump truck for the use of the Department of Public Works, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the selectmen, is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to Massachusetts general laws or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the town therefore. Any premium received by the town upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, and here's the typo, should be or. Pursuant to any other vote of the town heretofore adopted, lest any such premium apply to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with chapter 44, section 20 of the general laws, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. Would you make a motion, Mr. Chair? So moved. And is there a second from the finance committee? Second. Motion made and seconded. Now the amendment, please. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to amend Article 7. I, Russell S. Fox, do hereby make a motion to amend the printed motion section of Article 7 for the purpose of correcting typographical errors as follows. The sixth line of the motion, delete the word R and replace it with OR, the remaining language of the article and motion to remain unchanged. Okay. So now we have an amendment to the article. We have to vote the amendment before we can uh, proceed on the article. Uh, is there any question about the amendment? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. Uh, uh, so uh, we're, we're changing our to or. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, say no. Okay, so the article is now amended uh, and is open for discussion. A question or a comment on Article 7 as amended? Yes, sir. Please rise and we'll get a microphone to you. Uh, 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 young lady, <laughs> could we get a microphone back there? Brian Keats, Mortifying Road. So is this about the whole, the, the 200,000 $200, for the car, or is it about the amendment? No, you're on the main article, so you're, you're welcome to speak, sir. So for the $9,000 to repair the vehicle, how long would that increase the life of it, of the current vehicle that you're trying to replace? I mean, we, we need, um, just, just to keep it on the road, and we need about $9,000 of meeting work, but who knows what's going to happen in the next couple of months, and we'll keep that, you know, after it is a year. How many hours a year do you use a vehicle? How many hours a year? Yeah, it's going to have an engine. I did, well, it's by miles. It's 85,000 8, miles. So how many miles do you guys do a year on it? Uh, well, just do simple math, uh, about 20 years old. You have a 20-year-old vehicle. That's uh, 85 by, by 20. That's about 15,000 miles. No, uh, I don't know. 3,000 miles. 4,000 miles. But I, I guess my question is, I mean, if it's the vehicle's working and it requires only nine thousand dollars, why wouldn't we do that first? We've sunk in a lot of money into this vehicle just to keep it to this point as it is today. This this vehicle cannot con con continue to make stay on the road. So it's, it can't be. So the nine thousand dollars is not going to fix the vehicle to work. I, I did say that the immediate work would be nine thousand dollars just to keep it on the road. But like I mentioned, there are just issues with the rust, transmission brakes. Those are all going to fail at some point. It's a 20-year-old vehicle. That's fine. Just, I guess I don't understand why I was going to Other discussion on Article 7? Question or comment? Yes, sir, down here. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, if you would use the microphone, sir. J. Randy's Foster Road. Is there going to be a maintenance program? on that truck with that purchase? 
And you want to resolve the maintenance program than there is now. Where you have mechanics periodically repair things more expediently than you do. I think we have a pretty good maintenance program. I think the point is it's, it's a 20 year old vehicle. It's, it's meant it's useful life. We need to take it off the road. If you want to stop by our BTW garage, like a little bit equipment, I'd be more than willing to show you around. I think we have a very good, we do a very good job of keeping up with the equipment. Mm -hmm. right. I'm just asking for the new vehicle. Is there going to be a, tr a truck with 85,000 miles? There might be trucks, 150, 200,000 200, miles. And I drive them very hard. We do have a, a, a conference <laughs> that we do follow up for the manufacturer's recommendations. Okay, other discussion on Article 7? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, up here in the center, Jack. Please. Well, it's interesting in this article here that right away. Uh, there's an issue that goes right back to question and answer to Article 4, which was authorizing the board to select the obsolete equipment to take any action relative thereon. Uh, this 85,000 miles and $9,000 worth of repair versus a $280,000 tax for a new truck, how does that? You know, go to the issue of what the statutes say for determining obsolete equipment and such. Um, I agree with the gentleman here, I mean, for a DPW vehicle. And I got to commend you guys for this, for stand up job in our time, clearing our roads. And uh, no, I think pretty much the services here in town from the DPW are excellent. Um, and I see most of the vehicles going up and down the road a lot. And, uh, it seems to be in pretty decent shape, and I don't know which truck exactly it is you're referring to, but for, you know, a difference of $274,000, that's in keeping this one and being able to trade it in for a new one. Um, I was wondering if, if any of the selectmen could uh, help me out on whether or not they think that all falls within the parameters of what is considered obsolete permit, according to the statutes. So the question, Russ, I believe is... Uh, I don't know if it's the town administrator that uh, cited that statute for, you know... Uh, either, either you or, or Carl. The question, I believe, sir, and, and I'm going to paraphrase just so, so they can uh, address it, uh, is whether the truck that's being replaced will be disposed of. Uh, uh, under the uh, uh, Article 6, they, or Article 5, I guess it was, that we previously discussed. Oh, I'm oh, well, sorry, it doesn't say replace, it's just it, that, article, that article just deals with all the old equipment is dealt with? Yes. Not, okay, so the town would be acting on whether or not it's a based on the recommendations of the the, the, the public works director would go through the state procurement process to acquire the new one, and as part of that process, it'll either be a trade-in, and if it's not done as a trade-in, that will go through the selectman's process to be surplus and then bid out. I see. I see. Okay. Uh, well, that sounds like a, a good way to do it, and I'm sure uh, you know, that's all about the board and everything. I don't know. I mean, to me, that just seems like a great security for a vehicle that only has 85,000 miles on it to, to have to put it down and prop up. All right, other discussion on Article 7. <coughs> Seeing none, I'm going to call the vote. It does require a two thirds vote here since uh, uh, borrowing uh, might be involved. So, all in favor of Article 7 as amended, please say aye. Uh, and those opposed say no. No. All right, I am going to ask my tellers to help us count here. So if the tellers would rise, and I'm going to ask all of those in favor of Article 7 to please raise their hands and keep them up until I uh, indicate that you can uh, take them back down. Charlie, 
How many? 27. 27 on the left hand stage. Chris? Oh, still counting. And Michael? 25, sir. 25, thank you. Chris? Six, 61. 61, thank you. Those voting no, please raise your hands and keep them there. Charlie, what do you got? Three. Three. And uh, Michael? Eight. Sir. How many? Eight. Eight. <coughs> and Chris? Fifteen. Fifteen. Somebody will probably correct my arithmetic, but it's it's a clear two thirds vote. One hundred and thirteen four. Twenty-six <coughs> opposed. Uh, is well, thank you, counters. Uh, let's go to Article 8. We're going to go through kind of a similar process with this. Uh, this time I'm going to read the motion uh, and not the article uh, that the sum of $400,000 is appropriated to pay costs of upgrading and rehabilitating the College Highway and North Long Yard Road pump stations, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto and that to meet the, this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the selectmen, is authorized to borrow a set amount under and pursuant to Massachusetts general laws uh, uh, or pursuant to any other enabling authority and to issue bonds or notes of the town, therefore. Any premium received by the town upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, again, we're going to amend the word or pursuant to any other vote that the town heretofore adopted, lest any such premium applied to the payment of costs of issuance of such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Chapter 44, Section 20, thereby reducing the amount of authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. The treasurer is further authorized to pay all or any portion of this borrowing to the United States Department of Agriculture. The amount authorized to be borrowed by this vote shall be reduced to the extent of any grants received by the town on account of this project. This is requested by the Water Commissioner. I'm going to ask for the Finance Committee recommendation and then a motion. Uh, the Finance Committee recommends $200,000 purchase and furthermore moves. And uh, I'm going to get a second. Okay. So uh, Article 8 uh, is before you, and now the amendment, please. Mr. Monarch, I, Russell S. Fox, do hereby make a motion to amend the printed motion section of Article 8 for the purpose of correcting typographical errors as follows. The sixth line of motion, delete the word R and replace it with OR. The remaining language of the article in motion to remain unchanged. And that is a motion to amend. Uh, is there a second? Second. Okay, motion made and seconded. Is there a question on the amendment? We're changing OUR to OR. Hearing none, all in favor of the amendment, please say aye. Uh, and those opposed say no. Okay, so now we can act on Article 8 as amended. Uh, and uh, is there a representative here of the Water Commission? Okay, uh, the uh, DPW, head of our DPW is going to come in. Yes, the Randy Brown, 95 Fred Jackson Road, DPW Director. So we're looking to upgrade two of our uh, water pump stations. Uh, we have two interconnections with our uh, supply, emergency supply with sprinkled water and sewer. Two pump stations are on uh, College Highway and North Long Island Road. Uh, both stations were built at the same time, about 26 years ago. Um, everything is original to the built to the, to the original construction. Um, what we're looking to do is replace the pumps, motors, and controls under this contract. The building themselves are in still, in still good condition. We're not looking to change the building, just the uh, internal components inside the disposal. Okay, thank you for the explanation. <laughs> now we're open for discussion on Article 8. Down here. Uh, 
they've been gone to Hickory Lane. Uh, Randy, just a clarification, is this, a, is this fresh water supply pumping stations or are these sewer pumping stations? Water. Thank you. Other discussion on Article 8? Gentleman over here, uh, Michael Smith. <coughs> Sir Michael Smith, 75 Hillside Road. Mr. Director, Mike, we probably have to assume that this work's been bid out and negotiated for prices and all that kind of stuff. No, there has been no bidding done yet. This is appropriate money so we can move forward with the bidding process, the design and bidding process. Other discussion on Article 8 as amended? Question or comment? Okay, I don't see any. Again, requires a two-thirds vote, so we'll try it first by voice. All in favor of Article 8, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, say no. And that's carried unanimously. Article 9, uh, and it's going to be the same procedure again, uh, so I'll read you the motion that the sum of $3,260,000 is appropriated to pay costs of the College Highway Water Main replacement, replacement project, so-called, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the selectmen, is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to Massachusetts general law, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the town. Any premium received by the town upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, again, this board will uh, be amended, or pursuant to any other vote of the town, heretofore adopted, plus any such premium applied to the payment of costs of issuance of such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Chapter 44, Section 20 of the General Laws, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed pay such costs by a like amount. The treasurer is further authorized to obtain all or any portion of this borrowing to the United States Department of Agriculture. The amount uh, authorized to be borrowed by this vote shall be reduced to the extent any grants received by the town on account of this project requested by the Water Commissioner. Uh, is there a finance committee recommendation? The finance committee recommends to sell three million two hundred sixty thousand dollars to be appropriate. Now we want to make the placement project and lose the motion. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, now, uh, the amendment. Mr. Moderator, I, Russell S. Fox, do hereby make a motion to amend the printed motion section of Article 9 for the purpose of correcting typographical errors as follows. The sixth line of motion to leave the word R and replace it with or. The remaining language of the article of motion to remain unchanged. And a second. Okay. Uh, so we have uh, an amendment before you. Uh, any questions? Uh, seeing none, all in favor of the amendment, please say aye. Uh, okay. Aye. All right. I have a question. Okay, sir. We'll get the microphone for you. <coughs> Ryan, please more by what section of College Highway is this happening? Well, we're, we're doing the amendment first, so just stay right there, uh, and, and we'll get to you in a moment. But uh, we've got to vote the amendment first. Uh, just, just, you can stay standing. Uh, you'll be the first to speak. Uh, so, all in favor of the amendment changing our to or. What do you say? Aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. All right, so now we're discussing the amended Article 9, and sir, you have the floor. Brian Hees, more binding. Uh, what section of Paul Chai are they doing this in? And Jack, I'll just keep the microphone there with Randy. <laughs> <laughs> Very popular guy. Randy Brad, 95 Fed Jackson Road, TPW Director. So we're looking to replace the water line at Paul Highway from Tannery Road to the Westfield Town Road. It's a little over a mile um, of pipe. This uh, is an existing 10 inch cast iron main. Um, it represents the, the main feed from our uh, sprinkler water sewer emergency connection into town. Uh, this main has been prone to breaks and leaks over the past few years, and it does need to be replaced. Uh, so we're looking for a replacement of that water line from Tannery Road to the West Coast. All right, thank you. Okay. Other, other discussion on the amended Article 9? Okay,
uh, to Hickory Lane. Uh, is the cost of this to be borne by all the taxpayers in the town of Southwick uh, for any other funding that can come in, or is it just to the water users in the town of Southwick? This will be paid for by the water users. Thank you. Other discussion on Article 9? Okay, okay, yes, sir. And the question is repeat the answer to the last uh, question. Or repeat, it would, this probably would paid for by the water users, by the water retainer. Anything else on the amended Article 9? Seeing none, uh, requires a two-thirds vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say no. And that's carried in uh, The next article is Article 10, and it is the uh, fiscal 2017-18 uh, budget uh, for the uh, various town departments and boards and so forth. Uh, you should have a green document that you either picked up on the table outside or maybe at the election last week. We'll work from that. And uh, uh, we, for a number of years, have gone section by section, gone through a section, taken a vote, uh, and then uh, and gone through a section, then discussed it, uh, and then go on to the next section. This keeps us from excessive amount of page flipping and back and forth from uh, various and sundry departments. Uh, and so we'll do the same thing today. I'll try to keep you uh, grounded as to where we are in the document. So if you turn to the third piece of paper in there, uh, and it's a spreadsheet, and up at the top, uh, it says general fund. Okay, so a lot of numbers. Uh, and uh, down at the bottom it says page one. Uh, and the number that you are voting on tonight is what's over in the far right column. So uh, the column that says FinCom FY 2018 budget. The other numbers are there for comparison, context, and so forth, uh, but you're not taking any, any action uh, on those. Various line items are listed down. Uh, the left-hand side, as you would expect, uh, with a uh, budget-type document. So uh, the first area that, or the first uh, set of budgets that we're going to act on are uh, what is referred to as the general government accounts. So I'm not going to read numbers to you. I'm just going to kind of uh, uh, flip them through here as to what the uh, boards and departments that are involved. So, uh, moderated at the top of the page, then the selectmen uh, categories, the chief administrative officer categories, uh, reserve fund down towards the bottom of the uh, page, uh, finance committee at the very bottom of the page, flipping to page two, uh, uh, continues on with the finance committee, uh, reserved for wage negotiations, those of you who were here for the special uh, earlier, we transferred some money out from that from the current year uh, to, to handle negotiated uh, wage changes. Uh, then the accounting department, uh, then the municipal audit, then the assessor's department, then over to page three, uh, uh, town clerk, uh, salaries, operation, capital, uh, legal ads and operations, flipping over to page four. Uh, labor negotiations, tax title, uh, then election and registration, then in the middle of the page, conservation uh, commission, the very bottom starts with the planning board, accounts, page five, uh, continues with the planning board, then the board of appeals, uh, economic development, then computer operations, turning to page six. Computer capital, uh, then the town hall salaries and operations take up the page six. And then we wrap up this uh, uh, general line item uh, category with town hall capital and the printing expense for the annual town report uh, in the middle of page seven. 
So the uh, requested amount there uh, for total general uh, government in all of those categories is two million one hundred and eighty-four thousand four hundred and forty-five dollars. And with that, I'll call on the finance committee for their recommendation. The finance committee recommends general expenses of two million one hundred and eighty. Okay. Uh, does the finance are the board select members of the select board uh, wish to comment on any of those categories before we open up? No? Okay. <coughs> so, questions and comments on anything between pages one and seven. Somebody says there's a hand raised in the back. Uh, you say I can walk through seven? Pages one through seven, yeah. <coughs> I have one, the uh, labor negotiation fee. Uh, what page are you on, sir? Uh, page four. Okay. Top, top five. Thank you. Uh, negotiator fee of $14,000, $14,400. Isn't that what we hired our selectmen to do for us? Yeah. <laughs> the um, labor negotiation is a labor attorney, and uh, they, they don't provide the same services as the town attorney up on the stage here. And, they're used for collective bargaining issues, grievances, all sorts of personnel, benefits, and management issues. So it's it's a necessary function for a public entity to have. Other discussion on general government pages one through seven. Okay. Uh, seeing none, I'm going to call for the vote. All of these require a majority vote when we get all done. Uh, we're going to do a reconciliation measure that the uh, chair of the finance committee will uh, take us through that where we uh, match the appropriation or the, the expenditures with the appropriation. So uh, we'll, we'll uh, uh, vote several times. Again, the line item uh, amount is uh, $2,184,445. Uh, dollars. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Don't say no. That's carried unanimously. Are we going to go on to public safety starting in the middle of page seven? So the police salaries uh, are there, then other police accounts on page eight, uh, then uh, dispatcher on page nine, uh, and then we have uh, constables uh, kind of two thirds of the way down the page. Uh, then we begin uh, fire uh, salaries, and then on to page 10, uh, fire operations, capital, and we go into uh, public safety building operation capital on page 10. Uh, then on 11, building inspector salaries, operations, capital, then emergency management salaries, operation, capital. Page 12, uh, we have animal control, salaries, operation, capital, uh, then of course the middle of page, like management, salary, operation, capital, and lake restoration operations. Total public safety and the requested amount is $2,953,949. Discussion on any of those items, public safety items, between pages 7 and 12. Gentlemen, over here. Right. Hold on. I got it. Brian he's more funny. Uh, I'm just concerned as the town of you know, 9,500 residents is spending $900,000 on police salaries. 
Like, why is it so high? It seems like a very high number. We don't have an answer. Well, no, we're going to get an answer for you. Somebody needs to uh, speak to it. So, uh, uh, Chief of Police, uh, David Riccardi, so if we can get the uh, microphone up to I also noticed, too, on the other budget, they were spending like $60,000 on uniforms. Is that correct, too? Well, let's do one question at a time. So let's take the uh, police uh, department question first. Ryan, the uh, salaries are all contractual. Like the bargain, so. How many officers do you have? I don't know. I have 17 full time officers and right now 10 part time officers. So 27 people. That's what it has to be. A million dollars. That's what it is. And we're on the middle scale. I don't know what that means. You have to elaborate. Uh, I gotta give you the answer. That's what it is. What is the build scale? Oh, like other towns, probably. I guess that's all. I mean, I don't, you know, just curious about why it was so high. It just seems like an excessively large number. Okay, you had a second question about another category, Brian. Yeah, I noticed in the the the, the items they talk about, uh, and I'm sure it's part of the collective bargaining. What what page are you on now? And which category? <laughs> Uniform allowance. Okay. So that's on page uh, 12, uh, and it's $570, right? Uh, I think I was looking at a different one then. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm, we can not talk about that right now. I don't have the information for me. I'll find that. Okay. All right. Any other uh, questions or comments on public safety, pages 7 through 12? Seeing none, I'm going to call the vote. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. Those opposed say no. So we're going to start again uh, with public works on the top of page 13. Uh, so gas and oil, which is the uh, obvious probably, but for uh, various uh, town uh, fleet vehicles. Uh, then DPW, uh, highway division, uh, salaries, operations, capital, and over to page 14. Um, with the road salaries, uh, operations, then street lighting, then road machinery operations, capital, uh, engineering division operations, capital, uh, chapter 90 uh, division, uh, and then at the very top of page 15, uh, DPW solid waste salaries and operations and capital. For a grand total of the public works, pages 13 through 15, of $1,675,475. And again, uh, we'll take the finance committee activation. The finance committee recommends the appropriation of $1,675,475 for public works. Okay, questions or uh, comments on? Uh, public Works, pages 13 through 15. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. We got a, a question up there. Yeah, Christian Ness, uh, Bert Trapp, Uh I see for DPW road machinery operations, repairs and inspection, $40,000. Could uh, Randy go on to what some of those might entail? You know, minus the 9,000 we're not spending to repair the truck. Yeah, that's a good The item is just what it says for repairs and inspections. We have a fleet of about uh, 30 vehicles in our, in our, in our fleet and also all of our departments. And that's the money we use to uh, to make the repairs. We don't we don't have the capability to do a lot of um, let's say heavy equipment repairs in-house. Um, we do light maintenance repairs, um, but we can't anything that requires more mechanical work. We don't have the capability to do the repairs in-house. So okay. we can sell that out to a local, local shop. 
so of the 40,000 that are estimated or so forth, uh, what would constitute the bulk of the, the 40,000 dollars? Any type of repair, I mean, you could be very so electrical, it could be anything that like goes wrong with these things. Okay, so why are you seeing fit to repair these other vehicles, but the 200,000 dump truck, not so much? We the looking or we, we want to have a, a, a maintenance a plan where we can rotate equipment out of out of the fleet as it ages, and that's the reason for that, that first article was to make that equipment out of out of fleet rotation. So those other vehicles are worthy of repair, in other words. Yeah. Versus we do have a list of vehicles that we're looking to place down the road. We have a five-year plan, okay. but that's on the list this year. Okay. okay, anything else on public works? Seeing none, uh, I'm going to call you up. Uh, lady up here, so Maggie, you've got to run all the way around to the other side of the room now. Okay. We'll, we'll get to you next. We're going to take the lady over here first. Shore Road. I have a question on the uh, salt and the sand used for the roads. My question is, how is this extra salt that we're using that I wrote out in the newspaper affecting the roads and the lakes? So, just for reference, like, uh, those are that's a category uh, under uh, winter road operations top of page 14. So if we could get the microphone back to Randy uh, for an explanation on uh, uh, sand and other parts of uh, salt and other use. Yeah, so uh, Randy Brown, I'm Mike Brown Jackson. So as you mentioned, we do have a line item here for salt and sand usage, which we use. Um, um, we use mostly sand or salt um, to treat the roads in the wintertime. Um, this past year, um, we, we made a transition to use mostly salt as opposed to using a sand salt mix. And it's not necessarily the volume of salt that you use, it's the process, it's the timing. And we actually have, you're, you're utilizing less salt um, as a result of the new process that we have. Um, if I remember correctly, each run, uh, one run, of each, each dump truck has, we have five dump trucks, each truck has a run. And I believe prior to this year, we were using, I think, 13 tons of salt per run. We're using about uh, nine tons of salt per run. How is that accomplished, Randy? As I mentioned, it's the, it's the process, it's the timing. It's not necessarily how much the quantity, it's the timing. So we're doing more pre-treatment than we're doing in the past. So we're being, we're being proactive in terms of keeping the roads clear as opposed to waiting until the snow starts and then putting the salt sand on top of that. It's the process. Okay, thank you. And then there was a question up here uh, behind you, Jen. Oh, uh, that Yes. Yeah, Clarence Crosler. On the road. Just a question about the Saturday on the solid waste salary, $144,750. Is that one person for solid waste salary? Uh, let's get the microphone back to Randy. Uh, is he being on the we have we have three operators at the solid waste division, so three full time operations that their salary comes out of that line. Other discussion on public works? Okay, you, you need, yeah, you've got to put your hands up because uh, I, I, if you're just saying, uh, you know, I, I need to be able to see and recognize you. So My name is Kim James, I live on 6 Second Street, and a record to Deb said, We had so much salt in our streets this year, I could not even walk on dogs. It was white the whole season, even without snow. Even without ice, it's like it came up and dumped the truck. It was horrible. Second Street, Third Street, and Fourth Street around South Town was terrible. Okay, any other discussion? Raise your hands high so I can see them, please. Okay, gentlemen over here. Um, it, with the new truck, are you guys going to go to like a liquid option for like they do in Granby instead of using salt? Where they put down like a liquid? We have, uh, we're using a pre treat salt, so it's a liquid magnesium that's coated in around the uh, salt. Is, are you guys looking to go to more environmentally friendly options? 
like not using salt at all, using like alternatives. Salt is the most effective wood method we use to utilize it, and most communities have I mean, I can't think of any community that doesn't use salt at this point, or treated salt. Okay, I will give the lady a follow-up. Yeah, I'm sure you looked at the studies on how the salt affects uh, Roadways, etc. My question again is about the lakes. I know we're using less, but we're using a great deal of at home treatment. So I'm wondering how much of that gets into the lakes because we are seeing the roads staying parallel for quite some time. So, I don't know if a question, but I mean, we, like I said, we are using less salt than we had in the past, and that, that's based on per run. And that, that's, uh, that's, that's a number 13 tons versus 9 tons. What do other towns have lakes to be concerned about? I'm sure they do. It, it, I'll be honest with you, if you look at um, Quabbin Reservoir, that uh, supplies drinking water to Greater Boston area, um, Boston, Hawaii, Boston, it's the, the agency that, that runs that Quabbin Reservoir. They have asked all the communities, surrounding communities to use street salt, and now you say it. So this is this is a proven method that, that's utilized. It's creating gaining popularity from the state. It's, it's, it, I don't think the process is going to change. This is this is what we're utilizing this year, and I think it'll work out very well for us. All right, how long has this treatment uh, been used by other communities? I mean, I, I think I know some other towns that use it for ten plus years. Okay, I, I am going to shut the discussion off. You you had uh, more than two follow-ups to the original comment. Any other discussion uh, on this section of the budget? Seeing none, I am going to call the vote. Uh, again, the line item total for public works is uh, $1,675,475. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say no. That's carried unanimously. Uh, next category is pretty short uh, sewer implementation and operations. Uh, categorized as total other environmental uh, for the amount of $2,948. Uh, go ahead. The Finance Committee recommends the expenditure of $2,948 for <coughs> other environmental. Any discussion there? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say no. Uh, next section, starting in the middle of page 15, going several pages here, uh, culture and recreation. Uh, so the first two categories there are cemetery salaries and operations. Flipping the page, uh, their capital account. Then board of health salaries, operations, and capital. Then council on aging, salaries, operations, capital. Uh, then the uh, veterans agent there. Uh, uh, at the uh, middle of the line. And uh, total for human services, uh, $296,186. And this is the Finance Committee recommendation. The Finance Committee recommends the appropriation of $296,186 for human services. I think I read the wrong category for that, but uh, you know, know what's in there. Uh, we're open for discussion under human services. Question or comment? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. Uh, again, a line item total $296,186. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Uh, now we're over to culture and recreation, I believe. Uh, and so at the top of page 17, library salaries, operations, and capital, followed by park and rec salaries. Moving over to page uh, 18, park and rec operations, capital, and then cultural council operations, historical operations. Uh, channel 15 salaries, which is the uh, community access uh, channel on cable. And on the bottom, on the part of the top of page 19, channel 15 operation and capital. Total for culture and recreation, uh, 
$561,283. And what is the finance committee recommendation? The finance committee recommends the appropriation of $561,283 for cultural recognition. Okay, so pages 15 through 19, uh, those categories. Uh, any questions or comments? Yes, uh, gentlemen back here. And if you could just indicate, you know, what, sure. page Section. what category we're under. Page 17, library salary. Okay. Um, I see the librarian salary is 61000 The assistant librarian salary is 49000 And then you have a part-time salary is totaling 135000 How is it that the salaries for the combined part-time workforce is more than the two main representatives of the library. Uh, can anybody answer that? And does, uh, do we rely on volunteer efforts for that? Or all these people are paid for, for part-time hours? Were there hours? How many are there? I'm going to recognize uh, Mike, uh, Mike McMahon. Mike McMahon, 31, and I'm sure of the library board of trustees. The way the town operates is almost no one is full-time. Seven part timers and they work 18 hours a week, so the town pays no benefits, no sick time, no vacation time, no holidays, no nothing. And two full time employees, which is the library director and the assistant. Everyone else is part time. Right, and if they do use volunteers, both high school students and adults. So seven employees. Each averaging 18 hours a week, 135,000. They actually spend less than 135, which is a check on account plus. That's not what you actually spend. Appreciate it. Okay. Other discussion on your uh, culture and recreation. Okay. <coughs> I don't see any hands raised, so I'm going to call the vote. Again, the line item total there is $561,283. All in favor, please. Uh, those opposed, say no. Next category is uh, fixed costs of so the uh, principal on the debt, the interest on the debt, that's page 19. And over page 20, uh, the employee benefits uh, uh, costs for the various town employees, the uh, casualty insurance uh, for the various town operations. And so the line item total here is $1,782,627 uh, for debt, interest, and insurance. Uh, finance committee recommendation. The finance committee recommends the appropriation of $1,782,000. $627 for principal interest and Okay, open for discussion on those categories. Seeing none, I'll call the vote. Uh, again, you've got the line item total in front of you. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, say no. And that's carried unanimously. Uh, so uh, the grand total for general government before we move on to the enterprises uh, is nine million four hundred fifty-six thousand nine hundred thirteen dollars. Uh, you voted those incrementally, and we have an opportunity here in a moment to uh, pass it on uh, to go on an omnibus uh, authorization. So uh, the next several categories, uh, uh, for lack of uh, better description, has actually come up uh, at least once tonight. Uh, these are uh, enterprises that are separate from the town government, uh, and they're basically funded by user fees. So the first one is the water uh, department. Those of us who are on the uh, public water supply pay for that, that money is used to fund uh, this budget, uh, general tax revenues are not used to fund this budget, uh, not used. And uh, so you'll see the same with the uh, sewer and EMP budgets as well. So uh, our water department budget is on page 21. 
flows a lot like some of the others you've seen, uh, collected salaries in the product commission, uh, salaries, operations, page 22, uh, capital, uh, debt, interest, the salary reserved for this department, uh, enterprise, and the employee benefits, which is Medicare, uh, uh, and uh, grand total uh, in this category is one million six hundred and ninety-six thousand two hundred and sixty-one dollars. What's your recommendation? Finance committee recommends appropriation of one million six hundred and ninety-six thousand two hundred and sixty-one dollars. So open for discussion, water uh, enterprise, pages 21 and 22. Everybody there? Okay, uh, we'll take the vote. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. And those opposed, say no. Very unanimous. Uh, on page 23, you have the sewer division, same explanation. So those who are on the uh, municipal sewer system uh, pay user fees, uh, and that money uh, funds this budget. Uh, no, no tax uh, dollars involved with the record. Uh, so again, same general category: salaries, operations, capital, salary reserve, and the principal and interest on the debt. The line item, uh, the total of all those line items, is one million four hundred seventy-one thousand nine hundred. What's the finance committee recommendation? The finance committee recommends the appropriation of $1,471,960 for the sewer department. Okay, uh, so uh, discussion on uh, page 23, sewer enterprise. Question or comments? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor? Uh, $1,471,962, please say aye. Aye. Uh, uh, no. So the last uh, item here uh, is the EMS uh, enterprise, and I'll let the uh, chief correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, several years ago it was recognized that uh, many, many of us who have employer uh, providing insurance that will pay for uh, ambulance calls and uh, so uh, the town does does bill uh, for those uh, folks who have insurance gets the reimbursement the money goes into this uh, uh, enterprise and is available for appropriations is that basically correct uh, yes yeah. yes thank you uh, so uh, again same structure salaries operations capital and a salary reserve grant total of seven hundred thousand nine hundred dollars. Uh, and what's the finance committee recommendation? The finance committee recommends the appropriation of seven hundred thousand nine hundred and eight dollars for emergency medical services. Any discussion on the EMS uh, enterprise? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor, uh, please say aye. Uh, those opposed say no. So I'll turn it over to the chair of the Finance Committee for the uh, omnibus uh, uh, budget uh, recommendation and vote at this time. The Finance Committee recommends that the general vote to raise the appropriate sum of $1,568,983 and the appropriate and transfer for free cash $930,000. An appropriation transfer from the payment TV sum of thirty thousand dollars. An appropriate a transfer from the sale of the box sixty eight hundred dollars. An appropriate a transfer from recycling grant sum of six thousand dollars. An appropriate a transfer from overlay surplus the sum of fifty thousand dollars. An appropriate a transfer from sewer capital account sum of seventeen thousand dollars. And appropriate a transfer from sewer retained earnings, sum of $151,000. And appropriate a transfer from water retained earnings, sum of $566,261, a grand total of $13,346,044, which represents the general fund budget in the amount of $9,456,913. The water 
fund budget of one million six ninety six two hundred sixty one, sewer budget of one million four seventy one hundred and sixty two, and the credit service budget of seven hundred thousand nine hundred eight dollars. So I'm going to, there's a lot of numbers there, Rich, and I'm just going to uh, try to summarize it, and uh, you and the town accountant would uh, correct me if I'm incorrect. But basically, all of those amounts that you have approved uh, in the last half an hour, 45 minutes, uh, budget amounts, uh, that embraces all of those numbers, so those numbers, and then provides for where the funding for those amounts will come from. It's a balanced budget, so the expenditures would equal the appropriation. Is that a fair description? Yes. <coughs> and and, and uh, appropriations and transfer. So all you're doing is basically uh, doing one vote now to uh, you know, reconfirm everything we've done in the last 10 or so votes with the uh, budget um, uh, articles. So, with that, any further discussion? Seeing none, I'm going to call the vote. All in favor of the uh, of, of motion as presented by the FinCon chair, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say no. Very unanimous. So now we're back to the uh, uh, warrant, the uh, uh, agenda, if you will. Uh, and we're at Article 11 uh, on page 3. Uh, and uh, revolving accounts, and, and uh, you know, my compliments to uh, the accounting department and, and uh, the selectman's office. They a few years ago put all the revolving accounts into one uh, article, one table here, where where you folks could kind of see all of them in one place, what they are and uh, what the amounts involved are, uh, and so. Uh, the motion is that the town reestablish revolving funds for certain town departments uh, as authorized under the Massachusetts General Laws for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2017, with the specific receipts credited to each fund for the fiscal year as follows. So they're neatly laid out there at the bottom of page 3 and top of page 4. Uh, so let's just take uh, the boat ramp revolving uh, on there. Uh, so those of us who have boats or docks uh, paying in for fee uh, for a sticker, uh, the money goes into uh, this account, uh, not into the general coffers of the town. Uh, and it becomes available in the following year to the Lake Management Committee uh, for them to use in their operations. So it's a revolving fund. Uh, it can't be used for other purposes, so you can't use the, the bulk money and use it in the Council on Aging or vice versa. So it's, a, uh, it's revolving funds. It, these were not covered under the previous uh, budget res resolution because there's, again, a passing of these user fees uh, that various of us pay for different uh, things. So I've read the motion. I'm not going to outline the individual uh, categories. That's requested by the select board. The grand total over there in the uh, middle of page uh, four is 215000 And I will ask for a finance committee recommendation. The finance committee recommends the appropriation of 215000 for the various revolving accounts. The speculators has met both the Lamp and the both the Lake Committee, Estonia, COA, and COA passes. Okay, uh, open for discussion on Article 11. Question or comment? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor of Article 11 as presented and recommended to you, please say aye. Aye. Uh, and those opposed, say no. Very unanimously. Uh, Article 12 uh, is a uh, revolving fund bylaw uh, to see if the town will vote uh, pursuant to the provisions of Massachusetts general laws as most recently amended uh, to amend the general bylaws of the Code of the Town of Southwark and the new Chapter 25 uh, Departmental Revolving Fund Bylaw as follows. Uh, and that is uh, specified there at the 
uh, <coughs> page four, so it specifies purpose, expenditure limitations, uh, interest, uh, procedures, and reports. Then over to five, uh, it basically gives you that table uh, that you just did the annual reauthorization for so the various uh, revolving funds that the town of South has. Uh, that goes over to the middle of page six. Um, that's requested by the select board. Is the finance committee going to recommend on that, Rick? Sure. No. Do I have a motion? So a little kind of second. Uh, motion made and seconded. Uh, the town council, or if somebody wanted to offer a brief recommendation to the library town council. Town sure. Council. <laughs> As you'll see, that this Warren article is very similar to the previous Warren article. The Municipal Modernization Act required that municipalities now authorize revolving funds via a bylaw rather than through a Warren article. There may be a delay in the Attorney General approving the Warren article in the new bylaw. So the recommendation from the Massachusetts Department of Revenue was to vote it in both ways this year. So that in the future, we won't have to establish a bylaw again. We'll only be essentially voting on what is now Article 13. Okay, and so uh, uh, fair to say it's a procedural uh, issue here. Yes. Uh, to make sure that they uh, will the town meeting uh, can be checked in Yes. So uh, uh, Article 12, uh, motion made and seconded, open for discussion. Any questions there? That's the adoption of a bylaw uh, requires a majority vote. Uh, if I don't see a hand raised, we're going to do a vote. All in favor of Article 12, uh, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, say no. So uh, now we're going to do Article 13, uh, which I suspect has a similar uh, explanation. Uh, Article 13, spending limits for revolving funds. The see if the town will vote to set the limits on the revolving funds set forth in Chapter 25 of the Code of Town of Southwark in accordance with Massachusetts general laws as most recently amended as follows or take any other action relative thereto. Uh, again, those same uh, revolving accounts are specified there uh, with an annual limit on expense. So uh, that's requested by the select board. Uh, and again, I'll take a motion and a second. second. Motion made and seconded. I want a brief explanation on that. Under the new uh, amended statute, the town has to authorize the spending limits each year for each of the revolving funds that you just established in the bylaw under your vote under Article 12. So from, from this point forward, unless there's another change to the law, we'll just be having this particular bylaw in future years authorizing the spending limits on a particular basis. Okay, so again, another procedural thing uh, based on the modernization. Correct. All right. Uh, so, any discussion on Article 13? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Renewal of the cable franchise agreement. The fund to begin operation for fiscal year 2018 begins on July 1, 2017, and further to authorize the accounting officer of the town to transfer any balance to said PEG access and cable-related fund at the beginning of the fiscal year 2018, as requested by the select board. Is there a finance committee? No. Okay. So do I have a motion? And a second. Okay. Motion made and seconded. Again, uh, surely we need that point. Uh, it's, it's the same as the other uh, three, Ms. Margarita. This is another legal compliance issue with the State Department of Revenue, and it's to ensure that the funds that are in the Channel 15 peg uh, revolving fund are um, set up as a you know, revolving fund and they're voted out each year as line items in our budget going forward. So I'm going to ask a question, maybe I should know this, what's PEG stand for? Public Education Government Channel. Mm -hmm. And it's your Channel 15, you're scrolling, um, Dennis Clark is running that operation now and he's modernizing it and he's always looking for volunteers if people want to help him out. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, any discussion on Article 14? 
Saying none, I'll call the vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say no. That's carried. So, uh, Article 15, again, there will be an amendment in a moment here to Article 15, a little bit more substantive amendment uh, than uh, to the typos that we dealt with previously. So bear with us. Uh, let me read the motion first. Uh, and uh, then, then we'll uh, get it onto the, uh, we'll get a recommendation and onto the floor. So, uh, our, the motion is to see if the panel will vote to set up a budgeted reserve from the Community Preservation Fund annual revenues, the amounts recommended by the Community Preservation in fiscal year 2018, with each item to be considered a separate reserve. And then the proposed FY 2018 reserves are $42,409 uh, for open space, $42,409 for historic resources, uh, $42,409 for community housing, and then $293,496 uh, for the unreserved fund. Uh, so those are recapped for you in the middle of the page. Uh, there's a reconciliation of uh, the town amount and the state match amount uh, there. And uh, the, the map is explained to you uh, in kind of footnotes there at the bottom. And that's requested by the Community Preservation Committee. And uh, just because for sake of uh, uh, entertaining the amendment, uh, what's the Finance Committee recommendation? The Finance Committee recommends that the town vote to authorize the Community Preservation Reserve in the amount of $424,019 uh, in detail and read by the moderator. Okay, so now, uh, Mr. Chairman, are you going to amend? Somebody's going to, or the CPC is going to amend? Okay, Dennis, you're going to make the amendment? Yeah, the uh, total does not change. It was just a little clerical error. Uh, to reserve, 42409 will be changed to 42402 for open space. To reserve, 42409 will be changed to 42402 for historical resources. To, reso to reserve, 42409 will be changed to 42402 for the uh, housing, community housing. And the last one to reserve, $293,496, we changed to $296,813 for general unreserved funds. And just for reference, so that the, num the numbers actually that are recapped down below are actually correct. They are correct. The motion yes. that they're in. So That's correct. correct in the motion. Uh, so I'm going to take that as a motion to amend. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Uh, so let's uh, vote on the amendment unless there's a question or a comment, and then we'll, we'll uh, discuss the article <laughs> as an amendment. Uh, any further discussion on the amendment? Okay, all in favor of the amendment, please. Oh, okay. So, uh, Dennis, I'm told that uh, down at the bottom of the motion, uh, we should strike uh, where it says estimated FY 2017-2018, that we should strike 2017 from that. Uh, are you willing to include that in your amendment? We would like to include that in our amendment. Okay. So again, it's a typo uh, type issue. It doesn't doesn't change anything. Does that cover the new uh, And uh, so now we're going to. Uh, vote on the amended uh, figures and the bullet points up above. Uh, tie those together with the recap down below, and we're going to strike 2017 from the third line from the bottom. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say no. And that's carried unanimously. 
So now, uh, uh, we're open for discussion on, you know, the, the general article as amended here, uh, Article 15. Are there questions or comments about the uh, proposed funding for the uh, CPC? <laughs> Okay. Hi, uh, Chris Van Asper, Trevor again. Um, I was just curious, these community preservation funds, we just got done voting on all these other articles, which I'm assuming are from our tax revenue stream. Um, these CPC, these, uh, CPC funds, are they from the same uh, tax revenues from the town, or are these state tax dollars that are being spent? I'm, I'm going to recognize Dennis Clark for an explanation, and then uh, we may ask uh, town council to just uh, back him up on, on the explanation. Could we, uh, Maggie, could we get a microphone to Dennis uh, for those back? Yes, Dennis Clark. The, uh, the funds do come from a 3% surcharge on the taxes. It's not a 3% tax, it's a 3% surcharge, and that is matched by state funds every year. Uh, varying amounts, we have gotten up to 100% match. Some years it's gone down considerably now, but that took the work. Um, could you explain the term surcharge? Surcharge on what? Uh, I think I'll let the accountant explain the surcharge. It's a yeah, sure. It, it's a surcharge in addition to the, the tax that's that's already levied through general taxation. This is a, 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 a surcharge where the funds are earmarked only for community preservation projects, and they need to qualify for those through the, the community preservation committee. The funds cannot be used for anything else other than through CPC. And is it fair to say this is uh, authorized under a bylaw that the town meeting approved a number of years back? Uh, that was going to be my next question. <laughs> yes, and, 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 and there, there was some, some questions about it last year and it was reaffirmed. So, so the voters of the town approved the bylaw that, that designated 3% uh, surcharge. Is that on all general tax revenue? On all Included in that bit, that nice bill that Michelle sends uh, out uh, twice a year. Uh, if you read the fine print in there, sir, it, it's there. Uh, they, uh, and it come, if you're escrowed, it, it's coming out of there along with everything else. Wow, uh, okay. <laughs> I see. Um, these numbers here for this year, totaling 424000 are these typical of what the town generates each year? The, the, the state match is, is definitely decreasing over, has decreased over time. Oh, no, I realize that, but I mean, the, just the numbers that we're <coughs> going on right here, the, the 424,000, is that, is that just from what the town raises? The bottom number. Oh. Open space plus historic plus community, or is that state and town? Oh, the town is 130,000. So that if you look, if you, if you look below where the uh, different reserves are specified, it says total 424,000 dollars. Yeah. Then the next three lines recap where that's coming from. Uh, so the 130,523 is the state match. Is that correct? State match. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 44% right now, 
and they're, because there's large students drawing in next year, the match will probably decrease to the 15 or 20 percent uh, cost. So, so these numbers are typical year on year, year to year, year? It's been steadily decreasing. So oh, with the state year. match, but how about from the town itself? Basically, it would pretty much stay steady, right? Whatever your tax, if, if the tax base goes up, then the surcharge will Okay, so. Sir, if you. From year to year, we can expect these numbers to, except for the decrease in the state match, these numbers are probably typically going to stay, or, or the town contribution to stay the same? I, I, I think it's fair to say that as, as the real estate values change in the town of Southwick, and over time they tend to go up, this number will go up because it's a 3% surcharge on top of the uh, assessed property valuation. Is that a fair description, uh, Michelle? Yeah, so if, if, if uh, all of us uh, enjoy property appreciation, then we will also get the opportunity to pay more of this stuff. for the purpose of designating the accounts from which the total appropriation will be made. 
for some reason the accounts and the dollar amounts did not get into the article. So, second paragraph to read as follows. And that to purchase said funds to appropriate and transfer 280039 from the Community Preservation Open Space Reserve account and 719961 from the Community Preservation General and Reserve Fund for a total appropriation of $1 million for the acquisition of said property, said funds to be expended by the Conservation Commission and the Community Preservation Committee. And further to amend the first paragraph of the motion section of Article 17 is consistent with the amendment to the second paragraph as follows. The motion to see if the town will vote to appropriate and transfer 280039 from the Community Preservation Open Space Reserve account and 719961 from the Community Preservation General and Reserve funds for a total appropriation of $1 million for the acquisition of said property, said funds to be expended by the Conservation Commission and the Community Preservation Committee. The remaining language of Article 17 in the motion selection of Article 17 to remain unchanged. Is there a second? Motion made. Okay, motion made and seconded. I'm going to rule it a proper amendment. Uh, it's well within the scope of the uh, original article as published in the Warwick. Uh, basically, the, certainly the proposed purchase uh, of the real estate isn't changing. So the, the intent uh, is unchanged, and the total amount uh, has not changed. Uh, the manner in which it's uh, being funded is being more specifically uh, uh, enumerated. And so it is a proper uh, amendment, uh, and uh, I open it up for discussion. Uh, are there any questions about the amendment? Uh, any questions or comments? about the amendment before we vote on that. So, uh, I have a yes. Uh, Bob Rochak, 21 Greybrook Drive. Dennis, what will uh, be left in the accounts that, that you mentioned in the motion? What, was the question? What, what will be left in those, in those accounts? What will be the balance? What will be the balance? Uh, John Wally, Chairman. Um, about 150000 in the general unreserved and nothing in open space until we get our new amounts of money for 2018. Okay, so this drains the first account and almost drains the general unreserved account. Uh, what do you call 150000 yeah. <laughs> Other discussion on the amendment. So, uh, again, I'm not going to read it back to you. Uh, I think it's more of a technical amendment uh, to uh, specify where exactly where the funding comes from uh, than it is uh, the substance of it. We're going to get the vote on the main motion. Uh, in a few minutes after the discussion on that. So all in favor of the amendment, please say aye. Aye. And those opposed, say no. So the, the amendment is unanimously passed. And now we're open for discussion uh, under uh, Article 17 as amended. And would the representatives of the P uh, CPC or the Conservation uh, Commission like to speak to you don't have to. Uh, okay. Hi, Christopher Pratt, Chair of the Southwest Conservation Commission, 152 Berk, Chair uh, Hot. We are extremely in favor of this project. Um, using open space funds from the CPC is, I think, why we voted this into the town in the first place, so that we could preserve the aesthetics and the rural uh, appeal that we have for the town. Also, so that we can have it for public use. Uh, if this was denied, the land would not be for public use. It would still be as a private parcel, even though it may not ever get developed. Uh, this would open it up to public use. We'd have trails and access to the lake from that end of the pond. It would also provide continuous land from the state uh, acreage from Wild Lake 
uh, for the wildlife all the way to the lake, the grasslands and forest to the lake. So we would have some great connectivity. Okay. Uh, we're going to open it up for uh, and, uh, Mr. Mr. Tops uh, here uh, first. Uh, Valley Hill Paul, right over here. Marcus Phelps, 28 Eco Street, elected member of the planning board and representative from the planning board to the community preservation committee. Uh, as was already mentioned in Article 15 that was passed, we are projecting money coming in from the town uh, surcharge on the taxes plus the state funding, which totaled about $425,000 for just the year 2018. And of that, I would estimate about $325,000 will be available for open space and the unreserved account. And adding the $150,000, which is the balance, we would have about $475,000 available for our new projects. Uh, the Community Preservation Committee has a continuous application process. So we do, when we meet, consider any applications that have been submitted. And uh, we did consider this one from the Franklin Land Trust, and the committee voted to recommend that the town meeting spend a million dollars for this property. It's a very important piece of property. It's the last remaining lakefront property on North Pond that's undeveloped. And the key word we want to keep in our minds is water. It's an excellent, excellent resource for water, which in the next 20 or 25 years, from a planning standpoint, is going to be critical. It's going to be a limiting factor for many communities. And thankfully, Southwick is blessed with a good water supply, and we need to keep it safe. Citizens for Story Commonwealth. We are a nonprofit organization and our mission is to help preserve and protect the healthy lakes. Our membership recently voted to support the purchase of the North Pond land. We have donated $3,000, which is more than our yearly membership fees, to this project. And a new member donated another $1,000 because they, we all feel strongly that our lakes need to be healthy and clean and putting more buildings up there if we do not purchase this property would only degrade the lakes. And um, if and if there's any if there to be uh, if we did not purchase it and a developer purchased it, there would be the health of the lakes would deteriorate due to lawns of very expensive houses and chemicals. There's no sewers planned for that area uh, in the foreseeable future. And CRC and its membership feels very strongly that we should support this project. Thank you. Oh, so other discussion? Maybe down front here? Uh, yeah. Alex got the microphone. Um, Lauren Zides, 19 North Pond Road, Southwick. Um, my husband and I live on North Pond, and you're going to say, oh, well, they live, of course, they're going to vote for it. Not necessarily, yes, we are voting for it. <laughs> <laughs> because we're not selfish. Shame on the selectmen. <laughs> That's a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's get to the point now. On good days, during the nice weather, there are a minimum of 54 pontoon boats that just pull up over there, and they're all families. 
and you hear the kids jumping in the water. So 54, and say there's about four on each bone or whatever, you're looking at over 300 South Wickians having fun. Not only that, since the tunnels have opened up, that brought the traffic to us. Mm -hmm. Traffic's not so great, but it's great for the people. It's great for the kids. And to take that away and have condos built or whatever is going to do more wear and tear on the roads, more teachers, bigger schools. You just don't wear blinders. In the pond, the water is spring fed. You know what it's like to go in and you can feel fresh water coming up from the ground and you want to destroy this, I don't think that's very intelligent, especially for the future. I hope that all of you are like George and I, and not just thinking of yourself, but we're being narrow-minded. Narrow we don't. Think of people, think of youth today that enjoy it, and when they have kids and they tell their kids, this is what I used to do too when I was young. Okay. Uh,
value of the land we found. And one first, the 4.9 million had like 85 house lots, and the second one had 23 house lots. But for, for, for the town go for Wait, uh, uh, sir, uh, sir, I will recognize you again, but we're, we're going to uh, maintain some decorum. Uh, so let's get the microphone back up to Chris. Follow up there, and then I'll recognize Dennis. No, I'm just curious as to whether or not it's like use or lose. Do, do we have to commit to the million right now to go forward with it? Okay, so I'm going to recognize Dennis for the answer to that question. Very, very good question. Yes, we lose it if we don't appropriate the million dollars tonight. We'll lose the project. It's a five million dollar project with three appraisals. They all came in either over or at five or just a little below. So it is a legitimate price. It's done by approved appraisers. And yes, we don't vote on it tonight. We will lose the project. And, and I agree with you. Yeah. Why, why do we set Thank you for asking. Why, why do we set the money aside? Okay, let's let's continue the discussion with other people. Uh, Mike McMahon. And then Andrea, I'll do you next. Okay. Michael McMahon, 30 Warren Lane. I do not live on the lakes. I do not own a boat. And I have no relatives who live on the lake. But I think if you look at this document, which is it's on the town website, and it was on the table here tonight, it's the pros and cons from the finance committee. If you go to this article, Article 17, it talks about during a recent school feasibility study done by an independent nonprofit organization, the report showed that there were no significant building projects in Southwick, Randall, or Tower. Hence, unlike what the proponents of the North Pond Project would lead you to believe, there are no developments even being looked at by the planning board so that the supposed danger of the park is being developed seems remote. Now my comment. This is what we there. <coughs> Obviously, by looking at a report which was commissioned by the school committee, the report was bogus to start with. <laughs> so now if you actually look at reality, if you spoke to the town planner or if you spoke to any member of the planning board, they would tell you that currently there is a project under construction behind Big Y to build 26 houses. That in itself is a significant project. And if you go on realtor.com, they're selling those lots for 119000 or more on each lot before you build anything on them. So the reality is there is development going on in town. If you walk around the ranch golf course, there are six to $800,000 houses being built. They're actually being built, and they're actually selling. How people want to vote on this issue is up to them, but by handing out to the public statements that talk about that there is no development and there are no plans, is simply incorrect or at worst intentionally falsifying. So, no. Okay. Uh, Scully, uh, on Castle Street in Southwick. We had an opportunity as a town to buy the same parcel of land when King, who owned it originally, was willing to sell it. The town voted it down. It was a much lower price. We now have an opportunity, which may have never come again to purchase this land. Many of you don't remember the first late cleanup that was sponsored by the Citizens Restoring Kakama and the Lake Management Group. But that cleanup, before that cleanup, the businesses were going out, property values were down, the lake part of the town was considered the bad side of the tracks. You just heard what some of the houses are going for. It's not the wrong side of the tracks anymore. 
they're saying, well, if you build houses there, it would help the taxes. No, because water, as stated earlier, is a more important resource than oil, gas, or coal at this point in time. And if you put that many houses with all what people have been talking about, you're going to ruin. They're going to pollute the lake. They're going to ruin our aquifer, which is the water supply for at least three towns. And what's going to happen to the property values and your tax structure? Not to buy this is a great mistake. Uh, 
Uh, we are open for discussion on Article 18. If you want to offer any explanation, either from the DPW or uh, the CPC, okay, uh, DPW standpoint, uh, Thank you. 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 Thank through the North Pond property that will be used to uh, install a new water line to connect a, uh, the system on Point Road Road, the system on uh, the South Main Street, the South Main Street. Uh, that's the purpose of the uh, So open for discussion on Article 18. Questions or comments? Requires a two-thirds vote. Oh, there, no. there. Okay, Mr. Wall. General Walling, today, Foster Road. Um, I don't understand the $30,000. The, uh, the pipeline and the well site were raised at eight, over $800,000. I would hope that the water department will come up with more than $30,000 to pay for an easement on the property. Respond to that or? Uh That's the number that the water commission voted to approve, is $30,000. Okay, other discussion on Article 18. Okay, Dave Gunn. <coughs> David Gunn, Two Acre Green Lane. Um, water line easement uh, running between South Longwood and Point Road Road. What's its purpose? What's the benefit to be gained by having it? So the system on Point for Road is essentially a dead end line. So that's uh, the end of the system. Um, if there are ever any issues with that water system, uh, the water line, there was a leak or a break. Uh, we had to repair that leak or break. Uh, we also raise customers to be out of service for an extended period of time. Uh, it's always good practice to have reliability in the system. Have two points of entry to feed water from two different locations, and that's what this is going to provide. So we'll have water, if you want to supply water to uh, residents on Point Road Road, uh, we will do that through the pipeline along the Point Road Road, or also through this new potential pipeline coming up on South Long Road. Sir, up in the back with the uh, blue shirt, yep. So what happens if it's eight hundred thousand dollars and they only broke two hundred thirty? What happens? They just have to. I'm, I am going to ask the town council to, to respond to you know what the what the contingencies are here. If if the Franklin Land Trust who owns the property won't sell the the, the easement to the water commissioners in the town for thirty thousand dollars, then the town then the, the water commissioners would have to come back before the town and appropriate more money to purchase it. That's how it would work. Now Marcus stops. Marcus Stubbs, 28 Depot Street. Uh, is the Franklin Land Trust on the floor of the town meeting? Could they speak to this? Uh, we do have uh, folks representing the uh, uh, so, uh, Rich, you want to take that? Yeah. Please introduce yourself and, and then. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Town Meeting. Um, my name is Rich Hubbard. I'm the Executive Director of the Franklin Land Trust. 
the appraised value of both the easement and a well site, a future well site for the town, did come out to over $800,000. Um, if DPW sticks with the $30,000 number, we have to go out and raise that much more money from other sources. And it's, um, it's been a heavy, very heavy lift so far. But um, that, that's the reality. If it's something like 30, then we have to go out and, and raise another $700,000, whatever $1,000 to make up the difference. Other discussion on Article 18. I think I saw okay, another gentleman uh, in the back. Uh, two -thirds of the way back. Yep. Hello. Uh, Dave Wally, Fred Jackson Road. Uh, I'm just curious if we vote no on this, are we voting no? to not get any money, or can we vote no against that quantity and ask for more? I'm just kind of confused as to what a yes vote means, what a no vote means. If, if you vote down this article, then you would not authorize the acquisition of the easement or the appropriation of money. So it would result in no dollars being used from the water easement would not be purchased. If the, the, there, there's the ability to amend the warrant article, as you've seen done earlier, but th that I leave up to the discretion. And we'll uh, over here. And on the 16 Bad Road, South uh, are we talking about the same land uh, that we're, we've just devoted a million dollars to, to try to buy? Yes. 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 And if we're successful in procuring that land, uh, the town, uh, do we still need to buy it now or appropriate the money for it? Yes. Yes. Why? <laughs> very, very good question because this is a, essentially a two-part transaction with regard to this property and um, it's going to be acquired in, in fee uh, in, in total and then a portion is going to be sold to the town. It's a total of about 148 acres. So about the, the 62 uh, or 67 acres that was previously voted on in Article 7, I'm sorry, 61.63 acres would be sold to the town by the Franklin Land Trust, which is the entity that's going to purchase the, the entire fee. Prior to the Franklin Land Trust <coughs> transferring or, or selling the property to the town, because of the, the conservation restrictions and other restrictions that need to be placed on the property when the town uses the $1 million to purchase it, these easements and, and various rights of way would need to be in place prior to that acquisition occurring. Otherwise, it could violate various restrictions and, and that, that are required for the million dollars. So if this is the appropriation of money to authorize the purchase of that easement so that it can be done simultaneously to the acquisition of the property. Thank you. Okay, other discussion on Article 18, uh, Charlie Dunlap. Charles Dunlap, sit by in our row. How would eminent domain come into effect after all transactions are over? Well, well I, it's been a while since I've been in law school, but uh, that one, um, it would be an interesting dilemma that the town would be placed in because the, the town would be the owner of the property and it would be subject to various regulations and restrictions based on a conservation restriction that it's giving to someone else. If it violates the restriction, then the entity holding the restriction, which I believe in this case would be the Department of Fish and Wildlife, could try to enforce the restriction and not let the, the, the water easement go forward. It, it, it could be a major, major issue in the future. Other discussion on Article 18? Seeing none, I'm going to call a vote required. A 
Okay, Mayor. You gotta get your hands up, uh, and, and uh, because uh, we, we've got to move along here. I apologize. Laura resides on 19 North Congo, Southwick. Please correct me on this, because I know women know everything, but sometimes one percent not. Now, on this easement, if we have an easement there, as it says, it limits what could be done to that property. So, like, the town put in the side or whatever, they want to put this there or that there because there is an easement. No? So, it doesn't limit it? Huh? Conservation restrictions. That easement you look at So, it's conservation. So, what would you want to do if there wasn't an easement there? Either have a waterline and we go. Okay. Any last call here, please raise your hand. Okay, uh our canal. Why couldn't the waterline even be written into the conservation even description? Why couldn't that be part of the line? And then the town wouldn't have to be buying a waterline even from the town. It's extremely difficult to do, unfortunately. The conservation restrictions that are in, in place by the, the land grant don't provide for the, the easements and would have to be specifically negotiated, and that could jeopardize other funding that's being obtained through this whole process as well. David Gunn to Reaper Lane. I would certainly like to see an easy uh, solution to this. I don't know if there is one. Um, what I'm wondering is, is this a matter that could be uh, tabled? I mean, we're not talking about having to do the uh, approval of the easement until the actual land purchases is in place, if I'm correct. Uh, and I'll, uh, I, I would like to recognize, I would like to recognize Lane Pedroy from the Franklin Land Trust to possibly I, I, no, qualify. No, no, you request. I would request, I would request that we let Lane Pedroy elaborate on that. Okay, so uh, can we get, uh, is, it, is it Lane? Hi, Elaine Kederoy from the Franklin Land Trust. The waterline easement, we're looking at this as an opportunity. We had, heard, we had understood that the town was interested in connecting the two areas with this easement. This is the time to do this, waterline easement. It will be a 20-foot right away, as Randy described, that will be along the dividing line between the parcel that the town is hoping to purchase if we're successful in fundraising and the parcel that Fishing Game is going to own. So it will be along the boundary line. Plus the well site. This is an opportunity people are speaking about the water. We are also um, offering the town to reserve a well site on the land that the town owns. These two things have to be done after we buy it, if we raise the three million, plus with the town $1 million in the CPA. If we're successful in buying the land, we will then grant the easement for the waterline easement and the future well site to the town. Then we will sell the land, the conservation land, about 82 acres, to the town. And then the town will give a conservation restriction to the fish and wildlife. Once that is all done, nothing else can happen to the land that's open to the public for hiking and fishing and recreating. The waterline easement and the well site are there for whenever the town wants to exercise those rights. So it needs to be voted on. The $30,000 is a bargain sale for the town. It's not the value of it. We're, real, we're happy with that amount right now. And we need to vote to do that so that we're, we can move forward with this project as well. Thank you. Uh, so, okay, uh, Dick 
Dick Reynolds, Berkshire Avenue. I'd like to move the question. Oh, okay, thank you, Dick. Uh, I didn't, didn't quite hear you. Uh, is there a second to the motion? Second. Okay. Uh, so, again, a uh, motion to move the question. It's not uh, debatable. Uh, requires a two thirds vote. We do that by voice. Uh, so, all in favor of moving the question, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, say no. So we're going to proceed to a vote on Article 18, uh, requires a two-thirds vote. Uh, so all in favor, please say aye. Aye. And those opposed, say no. No. I'm going to declare that a two-thirds majority. Does anybody question, uh, would anybody request a counted vote to uh, reaffirm my determination? Then Article uh, 18 passes by a two-thirds majority vote. We're going to move ahead to Article 19 to see if the town will vote to appropriate transfer of sum of $73,000 from the CPC unreserved funds for a 10% local match towards the purchase of an agricultural preservation restriction of 34.8 acres of farmland on Laro Road and North Longyard Road. Uh, APR is valued at $730,000. Uh, the state of Massachusetts APR program is paying $657,000, uh, refers to the uh, uh, registry of deeds uh, and associated uh, information. Motion to save the town will vote to appropriate the sum of $73,000 in accordance with the recommendation of the community's preservation. Uh, so, uh, is there a finance committee recommendation? <coughs> The Finance Committee recommends the town to appropriate some seventy-three thousand dollars to acquire the residential property. Okay. okay, open for discussion on Article 19. Question or comment? Okay, uh, Mike. Just to raise a Michael McCann, 30 alarm Mike, just a simple question. Who is the owner of these properties? Don't tell me LLCs. Is it John Smith, John Jones, Mary? Thomas McLaughlin. Thank you. <laughs> Other discussion on Article 19? Seeing none, a call the vote uh, requires a majority. Uh, all in favor of Article 19, please say aye. 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 Vote, say no. Okay, give me a Article 20. The Safety Town will vote to accept the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 59, Section 5K, which authorizes the select board to establish a program for a lot of persons over the age of 60 to volunteer to provide services to the town in exchange for a reduction in the real property tax obligations of such person over 60 in an amount not to exceed 1500 or take any other action uh, requested by the Finance Committee and Select Board. Is there a recommendation? Okay. Uh, open for discussion on Article 20. By the way, those children that are leaving the room, uh, we've had several children here tonight. They've been exceptionally well behaved. Nice going. <laughs> here when, when uh, I think they can learn something from the process and uh, obviously they won't be so I won't uh, say that I guess the audience was uh, much younger since then. So anyway, uh, open for discussion on uh, Article 20. Raise your hand if you wish to comment there. Otherwise, I'm going to call the vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say no. Uh, Article 21, to say if the town will vote to raise and appropriate or transfer from available funds the sum of $10,885,951 for the South Collins Granville Regional School District Assessment for fiscal year 2018 commencing July 1, 2017 and ending on June 30th, 2018. I'll take any action here. Uh, on. That's requested by the Southwood Town Granville Regional School District. Finance <coughs> goes to raise the program to some $10,885,951 for the Southwood Town Granville School District assessment for fiscal year 
Okay, is there a representative of the regional school committee to, uh, uh, you know, to, to present and or take questions? Okay, uh, then uh, if you'd like to address the uh, budget here and then we'll, uh, uh, we'll address questions to you. Good evening, everybody. I'm Jennifer Willard, Superintendent of Schools, and I have Steve Presnell with a business manager. Uh, first, I'd like to thank you for staying. I know it's been a long evening. Um, I just want to give you some highlights of this year's budget. Uh, a lot of times we come to you with just numbers, and I won't be long, but I just want to let you know some of the highlights of our budget this year. Really focus on education and improving instruction in the classroom. And this year's budget, we um, are adding two additional educational coaches, which aren't on the sports field, but they go in the classroom, so they really support our teachers in improving instruction that, so that the learning that is going on is more rigorous and the students are thinking more. We're calling it cognitive engagement. So we really put some money towards that. We're also putting more money towards professional development for our teachers. Also, during uh, the public forums, uh, during the Granville uh, Feasibility Study, school, school Utilization Study, a lot came out on class size. So we did add three teachers in this year's budget for kindergarten, first, and second grade to reduce class size there. Uh, with this budget, we did come in at a 1%, about 1% less than what we were asking for in this current year. What does it look like in Southwick? Uh, it's about one third of a percent less than what we asked for uh, last year at this time. So with the increase in fixed costs, health insurance, uh, wages, we're coming to you requesting less money than we requested last year. All right, you ready for some questions? I am. All right, thank you, Superintendent. Um, so, uh, questions or comments about the proposed regional school uh, assessment? All right, see, okay. Uh, lady, uh, I can bring it to you. If we can get the microphone over there. this year due to a declining enrollment. Can you repeat the question, uh, ma'am, so that she can, so that I, either of you? Um, I think that Granville being closed right now is going to force it. It is. We did receive a fact finding from the judge a week ago, and we will be going back to court on May 19th with remedies. We are going forward with this budget with the closure of Granville Village School. Okay, other discussion on uh, uh, Article uh, 21. Raise your hands real high if, if you wish to speak. Otherwise, uh, I'm going to call the vote. Uh, okay, uh, lady down here, we can get the microphone back there. Chelsea Berry, 106 Close Hill Road. Um, you stated your highlights, but I also wanted to note that it seemed like there was a lot of teachers that were removed from staff at the higher levels. If you look at the budget, it does look like there uh, is a net loss of teachers. That is because we did close the Granville Village School. Uh, the also, with the declining enrollment at the regional school, we are having a loss of two teachers at the regional school. Okay, any, any final questions? Uh, Discussion on Article 21. Seeing none, uh, call the vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say no. 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 Okay. 
Uh, so I'm going to declare that a majority vote, uh, which is required for this particular article. Does anybody wish to see a counted vote? Just raise your hand. Okay, then we're going to move ahead to Article 22 to see if the town of Southwick will vote not to disapprove certain additional debt authorized by the Southwick Town and Granville Regional School Committee under a vote dated April 14, April 4th, 2017, which reads as follows, voted, approve authorization to incur debt by the issuance and sale of bonds or notes for the amount of $600,000 for the purchase of all items specified in the school district's uh, fiscal year 2018 capital improvement plan or take any other action relative thereon. That's requested by the regional school uh, committee and the other finance committee. Finally, the committee recommends that the town vote not to disapprove Article 22 in the amount of $600,000. Okay, uh, open for discussion on Article 22. This, uh, uh, by way of explanation, uh, basically you're being asked to uh, affirm the vote of the regional school district to incur this uh, uh, debt in their FY 2018. So even though it says not to disapprove, you're, you are being asked to uh, ratify uh, the vote that they've already taken. Uh, we've got the superintendent here. Uh, any, any questions or comments? I can bring a microphone too. Sorry, Allie. Karen DeMeo, Nighttime Mall. I would like the shell game explained to me here. You're asking for $600,000 of borrowing, so that would be on top of the $24.5 million budget. And if your April 4th school committee on the mix, uh, Pam Peschke asked if these were estimates or if they were actual quotes, and you replied that they were estimates. And then Mr. Fresno said that um, the committee can vote to reappropriate the funds for other purposes. So here, you're asking us to vote for these specific purposes, but you, know, you can go and change your mind and use some other funds for other reasons without coming back and asking us. Um, now, $200,000 you're asking for uh, transportation, which is for a school bus. And currently, you're negotiating, so when you stop negotiating with the school bus, you're under a contract because you like to go out and um, outsource it. So why in the heck are you asking us to do that? Bus when you're in your business fleet. Then you would be able to. Well, wait, I'm, I'm just talking the whole show. Okay, why, why don't you finish your, your comments, ma'am, and then we'll, we'll go to the superintendent for our response. So, now, so you still have the mic. Now, down to $100,000 for the playground. Uh, they have $100,000 in their budget, and they came to the CPC asking for about $160,000. They came forward with no quotes whatsoever. They came back with. Um, Something from the original school project, two hundred and ninety thousand dollars, which the town voted down because they did not want to incur that debt. But now they're trying to get the town to come up with that fund bill. And um, also in the school committee minutes, Mr. Holm informed the committee that the district is planning to apply to the community preservation act um, for this funding. And if that is approved, he can, they can reallocate the funds for other purposes. So. Here is the line items, and they just keep telling us that they can hold they can use these funds for other purposes. So why are we telling them that we're giving them permission to borrow six hundred thousand dollars when what on this paper is bogus? Okay, now I'll recognize. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry you misinformed. We are still in contract negotiations with transportation. I, I don't know where you got that information from. In fact, we met with their negotiator today. Uh, as far as buses go, as you know, we closed Grandville Village School, and we are going to need to get buses. $200,000 is not one school bus. It's multiple buses, and it's what we put in the budget year after year. Uh, it's completely transparent. Uh, end of year expenditures, you can come, you can speak, and you can make a meeting with Mr. Presnell, and he'd be more than happy to go through everything with you. As far as the playground, uh, it's going to cost about 275 to 290 to do the Powder Mill School Playground. Uh, we're not coming to you for the whole amount. Uh, the Powder Mill staff and the PTO is raising money on their own because they believe in this. 
Uh, we are looking for $100,000 out of the capital. We also went to the CPC for some additional funds because it is going to be a community space. We want to make it ADA appropriate. We'd like to make some shade. We'd like it to be a community place for the town. So that's what we, our plan is for the playground. Right now it is currently underwater anytime it rains uh, and it's unusable. Uh, our first estimate that we did receive, and you are correct, we didn't have all the information when we went to the CPC. Uh, we have received two estimates, and just for the Playscape equipment is over $113,000, And that doesn't even touch the, uh, uh, the surface that we have to put under it. Bark mulch is not the way to go anymore, especially when we're talking about ADA. Uh, it also doesn't talk about addressing the landscape for where the playscape needs to go, which is estimated at over just $100,000 alone. So this is a town project. It's not something the school can take on uh, by themselves. The parents at our school are more than willing to do what they can. They have golf tournaments for it. Uh, I appreciate the uh, conversations I've had with the members uh, on the CPC, and we're doing what we can on our end to get you the information that you're looking for. Uh, together we will make uh, the Powder Mill Playscape uh, a pretty fabulous place for the children in our town. Um, I'm not quite sure, oh, the sh shell game. Um, I'm not quite sure about that. I will let Steve address it, uh, but I know, I've been here a year, and what we have spent on capital money has always been what is in the budget. We've spent it on technology, we've spent it on transportation, we have made some physical improvements to schools. Um, I'm, I'm not quite sure what else is people are suggesting that's being spent on, so I will turn this over to Steve. Stephen Prontal, business manager for South Macaulay Granville Regional Schools. So this, this article is on authorizing the uh, school committee, the school district, to borrow $600,000 for the items identified in the capital improvement plan that was voted on by the committee back in early April. The committee does have a certain amount of discretion to move funds between these line items, but they would not add any additional new line items or could not, funds could not be spent for items not already identified on this, on this plan. Okay, other discussion on Article 22. Uh, I'll allow a brief follow-up, Mia. I'd also like to know uh, why we are borrowing $600,000 when you have just reported that you will have, by the end of this year, a $800,000 in a reserve account, and then also because of mismanagement of funds, about $180,000 is going to be returned to the three towns. Um, so why do you need us to borrow money when you have money available? Uh, great question. Uh, every year, the town, the, when the school department brings their budget to you, you will see about $600,000 to $650,000 less in what we're requesting from the towns. It's actually great management of money. Uh, each year, they, this year, we actually brought forward $650,000 out of excess E&D, excess and deficiency, so that we could cut the assessments that we were asking for from the three communities for our budget. So it's actually excellent management of money. Okay, other discussion on Article 22, and we're going to go to a vote. Anything else? Uh, seeing none, uh, I'm going to call the vote. It does require a two-thirds vote since it's authorization of debt. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say no. No. Uh, we are going to do a counted vote, so if my counters would rise. Uh, and uh, uh, so all in favor of Article 22, please raise your hands. Keep them there until counted.
those opposed, please raise your hands. Keep them there until fully counted. Charlie, what do you got? <coughs> Two. Uh, center, Chris? Eleven. Eleven. And on the right, Michael? Two. Two. So the vote is 63 yes, 15 no. That's a two-thirds uh, majority uh, motion is successful. Uh, I'm going to move ahead uh, to Article 23. Uh, and it is a uh, bylaw proposal or a bylaw amendment uh, regarding open containers of alcohol. Uh, and um, it starts at the bottom of page 9. Kids get a little inebriated, so we want to have a tool on our belt that will uh, hopefully prevent this from happening in the future. Okay, uh, open for discussion on Article 23, Open Container Bylaw, uh, Mr. Phelps, and then we'll go to uh, Mr. Johnson. Marcus Phelps, 28 Depot Street. Does this apply to uh, open containers on boats on the Kahnema Lake? Uh, did, did you hear the question, Jake? Yes, I did. Okay. Uh, it's public beaches. Uh, as far as the lakes go, it's, it would be the boat landings and everything else. But if they're in their uh, boats within the lake, they're perfectly fine. Just so long as they're not operating a boat under the influence. Okay, and, and same question. Okay. Any other uh, discussion on uh, Article 23? Uh, gentleman in the back uh, with the blue shirt. Can you get a microphone over there? Yeah. Okay, Real South Long Yard. Uh, I understand the motivation, but is uh, PI or disorderly conduct not sufficient uh, to deal with someone who's <laughs> neighbored? If you go the route of disorderly, then you're going to have a person getting a criminal record, which means he's got to go to court. He's probably going to have to get an attorney. This here's a civil process which will be a little less harmful on him and Bachman. Other discussion on Article 23? Okay, uh, gentlemen over here. Uh, just to find these If your concern is people being inebriated in public, why is this bylaw um, not against with inebriation instead of open things? I, I didn't hear his question. Um, if your concern is people being inebriated in public, why is bylaw, uh, civil bylaw, against uh, public inebriation instead of open containers, which is not the same thing? No, just the open container is what we're concerned about. If we can prevent that open container, then we're going to obviously prevent something else from happening. Okay, and the gentleman up here. Uh, about halfway back with his hand raised. Yes, sir. And are you raising your hand over there, sir? So currently, I just want to understand the law. So currently, if I'm drinking at a park, you can't do anything, correct? Unless correct. I'm drunk or causing a problem. Correct. So if I'm causing a problem, there's something you can do or you can't do? Well, obviously, if you're, you're causing a problem, we can arrest you for disorder. I'm just concerned, I mean, a hundred dollar fine for a beer, like, I mean, that seems, is there like a warning process or is it just a straight up fine? I mean, there's, there's no warning process, it's a straight fine. Okay. Okay, did I see a hand raised over here on the right? No? Okay. Um, anybody else? Last call on Article 23. Okay, there is somebody. Yeah, Michael Smith said by those side, I commend the chief for his, for his work on this and 
I assume that he and all his uh, police officers uh, know their business, know their job, have been their experience, and uh, we should support them. Okay. Thank you. Uh, seeing no other hands raised, I'm going to call the vote that requires a majority vote. Uh, all in favor of Article 23 as presented to you here, please say aye. Aye. And opposed, say no. No. Uh, again, I'm going to count that. Uh, I'm quite certain we have a majority, but uh, with the counters rise. And those in favor of Article 23, please raise your hands.
I'm not quite sure being stuck in there, but uh, there's a purpose anyway. Uh, and uh, then there's some definitions there. There's a temporary moratorium, and then there's a uh, severability clause. Uh, or take any other action relative there too. Uh, and that's requested by the planning board again of uh, uh, recognized roster. For the explanation of yeah, uh, an explanation, and I'll uh, take that as a motion to advance the article. Okay. Um, the, the planning board is recommending um, putting a medical marijuana moratorium in place. Um, the town state approved um, the, the medical and well, the recreational marijuana last November. Um, this did tie towards the medical also, so we don't have any zoning in place for this right now, and the state is working on their laws. Um, and they have actually extended their um, estimated time for their um, the final law to be in place for March of 2018. So this moratorium would give us time. We already have a subcommittee in place. We're already going to be keeping in touch with the, the state and its recommendations and try to um, get a, a, a bylaw in place for next time. So we would recommend that we have this moratorium in place to give the planning board and its subcommittee time to get proper zoning that does work with the state. Okay, is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded, and now discussion, a question uh, or comment on Article 27. Okay, uh, down, uh, right behind you there, Alan, there's a lady with her hand raised. Yep. Jocelyn Lennigan, 74 Cannery Road. Let me say, I don't use marijuana recreationally. I don't intend to start. I'm not a, not a medical marijuana patient. Nobody in my family is. I really don't have a personal interest in this. But the trend nationally is to focus on things that are more dangerous, like opiates that are killing our kids. And I just think, I think this moratorium and the next one are based on fears and perceptions that are not warranted by fact. We are losing an opportunity for tax money by, by prohibiting dispensaries. For the record, I wasn't in favor of the first dispensary proposal. I thought it was too novel and it didn't have safeguards. It was too close to the schools. This second one, are you aware that they were proposing to take the THC out of the marijuana. They can do that. So there was no rational reason to prohibit that. I just think we ought to kind of uh, lay off criminalizing marijuana and fussing over it. We have other things that are more important to deal with. And we're losing an opportunity for town income with this. Okay, other discussion on uh, Article 26. Mr. Moderate. Yes. Okay. Doug Mogul and Five Hidden Place, and uh, I had brought this issue up to the planning board at one point in time uh, for their consideration as part and parcel of this. Um, the people voted on this issue last November, and we need to act to respect the will of the voters of the, the state and our town. However, this law and the implementation of that said law is in flux. And so the reason for this moratorium is to give the town time to put forth zoning for the dispensaries and recreational if necessary, and to give the state time to promulgate the rules and regulations and laws that they are going to put forth around the citizen petition law that was passed in November. The interesting thing to me, one, and the reason that we have the moratorium on both is because it's getting cloudy, pardon the pun, is there was a request uh, for a medical dispensary in town that did not materialize, that, that uh, proposal did not receive a letter of support or a letter of non-opposition, if you will, from the Board of Selectmen. When the, the citizen petition passed, the, the, the zoning portion of that petition stated that if you allow medicinal in the zone, you could then not disallow recreational in the same zone. 
So, if we had allowed that medicinal prior to the ballot initiative in November, that would have been in your business zone, I believe it was right outside of Big Y. That business zone stretches up College Highway straight through the downtown district. I don't know that that's the right answer. Let's give the planning board the one year they're asking for to formulate that zoning bylaw and come back to give the state time to promulgate their rules and regulations, give the planning board their time to set up their zoning, okay? And we can come back at the town meeting to, to, to decide on that proposed bylaw. Thank you. Okay, other uh, discussion on Article 26. Gentlemen back here. Right uh, hi, Ryan Keyes, Mark Pine. I was actually at the planning board meeting, one of two residents in town that showed up. Um, at the meeting, it was explained to me that their committee would be formed prior to this meeting. It never materialized. I can't, I... That's not true. It, 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 is, it is materializing. It's just that there's changes in the board, so the planning board members. Yeah, we can hear you, Ross. So let the gentleman finish, and then we'll let uh, we'll give the microphone. Again, that just goes back to the whole. I mean, this meeting. I forget when it was. I feel like it was in might have been January. I'm not sure. Um, it was so long ago. Uh, but regardless, um, this is a this is just a backdoor to to not allowing the law in by by creating a zoning. Law. I mean, it's like alcohol. I don't see what the issue is here. Uh, I understand that there needs to be a law, but a year seems like an excessively long time to not allow Selfwick to get into the game. Okay, like, and uh, I'm going to recognize Ross Perry, and then uh, Allie, are you are you asking? Uh, are you a registered voter? Yeah. All right. Well, then you'll get your chance. But Ross first, and then Allie. I just I want to the. the subcommittee is in process of being um, selected. The planning board is going to have a change in membership, so we have to be sure that we have the two planning board members. There's going to be a selectman, board of health, and residents, and they will begin meeting, you know, in, the, in this next month. They're just, we have had a lot of other things that, you know, and it will meet on Tuesday nights, probably opposite of the Tuesday night planning board meetings, because we meet every other Tuesday. It'll be very similar to the common directive bylaw subcommittee, I'm sure. Okay, and the microphone over to Allie, and I'm recognizing her name and address, please. Uh, Allie Sharman, 153 South Long Yard Road. Uh, so correct me if I'm wrong, but Article 26 just simply puts a moratorium on registered marijuana dispensaries, not marijuana itself. It's just the dispensaries for this particular article. Correct. And that you're getting a uh, response that you are correct on that, Allie. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Any other discussion on Article 26? Is there a hand back? I see. Okay, uh, gentleman in the back. If there's somebody. Hi, right, Ben John Cola, 28 Little Road. This is just a general comment. Everyone's entitled, obviously, to their opinion. Um, I'm a veteran and I'm an American Legion member, and the comment I would like to make about med med medical marijuana is in reference to other veterans, especially veterans coming back from the wars that we are fighting in the Middle East, and they will have an awful lot of problems. Two things that I understand to be true from studies that have been done across our country is that a lot of veterans who have been put on medical marijuana to help them deal with the issues and problems of the things that they dealt with overseas. Uh, two things resulted from their uh, being put on the medical marijuana. One was it reduced the amount of opioid, uh, I to use the word correctly, abuse. Um, and the other one that it reduced significantly was the number of suicides. A lot of veterans, including myself, believe that medical marijuana being used to treat these problems that the veterans are hap uh, have happened to them is significant and it's reducing other problems which involve suicide and abuse. So I'm just asking people to think and carefully before they decide 
something that is beneficial in medical and it's trivialized into something that's extremely dangerous. This is a much different perspective of something that's extremely dangerous. But even within the veteran community, there's a lot of disagreement in it. But for those people that it is helped and for those people that are advocating, I feel sincerely it is beneficial. And that, that's all I have to say. Gentlemen in the center, um, Blue Shirt. Yeah. Dave, real South Just a practical question. What's the implication of moving before the state gets guidance uh, next March? Would that be unneeded churn for, uh, say, the business owners who will open up a dispensary? I just worry about what that implication would be. Roz, do you wish to respond to that? And, uh, can you get a microphone over here? It, it could cause issues, and you know, as a, a veteran planning board member, it's it's nice to have laws on the books that are um, defendable and fair and fit with the, the, the state laws. You know, we can't go further than what the state does you know we can we, we'll hear what they have to say and then we'll figure out where it fits in our town it is not the intent i can tell you of anyone on the planning board to go against what the town voted we're not trying to outlaw it does not it's we just want to make sure that we know where as planning board members i mean we are we're a volunteer planning board and we just want to be able to have good guidance as to where the town would like to have these different facilities not that they're not going to be there the subcommittee meetings, just like the planning board meetings, will be open to the public. They will be advertised. And we would like to have input from residents as to where it would be a good idea and how we can fit it into our zoning so that not only the planning board next year, but the planning board for the next 25 years knows what they're supposed to do when an application comes before them for either a medical marijuana facility or for recreational marijuana. We just want to have the right tools, and we want to have time to develop them. That's all we're asking. OK. Uh, one more, and uh, up in the back, and then we're going to vote on uh, Article 26. Hi, Gina Patterson, Hunters Rich Circle. I just have a quick question in terms of I'm very sympathetic to the medical marijuana. Where are the closest dispensaries that you could potentially get medical marijuana? <laughs> I guess if you have an answer to that question, I'm going to recognize you, sir. Uh, currently, there's uh, the closest local one is Northampton. Uh, it actually employs 60 people at a $15 an hour plus wage. And um, I, if you've ever gone by the place, the parking lot is packed every day, seven days a week. So there is, there is the ability to get medical, yes. medical right now. Correct. And within the law, because the dispensary is so far away, you actually can do home grows um, because it's considered, uh, uh, I'm trying to get the correct word, uh, a hardship. Thank you. Thank you. A hardship because it's actually so far. Uh, there is a proposed one in Polio. Um, but also, uh, there's a big issue with unregistered delivery services currently active, active in the area that are going, that are saying that they're licensed. So you can't get okay. Uh, can. Yeah, we're not going to get into that. We're going to recognize the lady back here uh, uh, or over on the side, and then we really are going to vote this thing. Bay, 30 year Coy Drive. Just these questions that are asked right now give me reason to say that we need to say no to this right now and allow this planning board to do their job. Yes. Uh, Ma'am, I'd urge you to reconsider what you just said. Yeah. <laughs> I, yes. I think what you're asking for is for us to, to pass this yes. issue yes. to give the planning board time. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. We're going to vote on Article 26, uh, which is a uh, temporary moratorium on registered marijuana dispensaries, as laid out on most of page 11, a little bit over on page 12. 
Uh, so if you vote yes, uh, it would establish the uh, temporary moratorium uh, as outlined. If you vote no, there would not be any moratorium. It requires a two-thirds vote. All in favor of Article 26, please say aye. Aye. And those opposed, say no. No. Uh, I'm going to declare that a two-thirds majority vote. Would anybody like to see a, you want to count it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so if the counters would rise, uh, all those in favor of Article 26, please raise your hands and keep them there. Subject to approval, 
by town council and after compliance with Massachusetts general laws after 30 B and any other relevant provisions of the general laws requested by the select board. Uh, do I have a motion and a second? Uh, so uh, can we have a brief uh, description of what's going on? Sure, Mr. Moderator. Um, this article authorizes the select board to enter into a long-term lease for these town-opened, town-owned open space parcels for the installation of a cellular tower. The town has been approached by a large cellular carrier who wishes to increase capacity service for customers in this geographic area of town. And in order for us to consider doing this, we'd have to have this approved. And if this were to be approved by people, then the town would issue an RFP bid document for any and all interested carriers to submit a bid. Any prospective bidder must file with the planning board for the necessary permits and public hearings with the abutters input to seek approvals before an agreement could be entered into. Okay, so there's your explanation. Uh, is there a question or a comment on Article 28? Okay, you can pop up back here, so if you can get a microphone back here, please. Sally, Simone, here, uh, where would the cell towers be, and what would the type of construction and size of the towers be compared to the aesthetics of the neighborhood? Uh, this, I have, well, I'll, I'll hand it over to the planning board in a minute, but um, this was a carrier that's looking at the, um, the open space that the town owns, the 30 acres off of Lexington Circle. So for us to consider this, they already did balloon tests and they did propagation studies to make it worthwhile for um, um, the engineering. But uh, they would have to uh, would have to do an RFP. They'd have to respond to it. Then they'd have to file with the planning board to make sure that what they were proposing to do would fall within the guidelines of the wireless services overlay uh, district that we have. And that would be something that the planning board would be the permit granting authority, and they would regulate. And Roz, anything here? I guess just that, you know, this is just so they can go through the, pro the process to see if it's viable financially, and then the applicant would still have to apply to us. So it's it's not, you know, we, we have a process for that also, uh, how tall it can be, and, and we have a, a pretty long bylaw, so I can't really regurgitate it for you, but um, it would still go through that process. And the gentleman down here who's uh, in the orange shirt who's raising his hand. Uh, microphone coming your way. Where is that exactly? People, sir, if you would use the microphone, it's a cat video over there. <laughs> so if you turn down Liberty Lane before you get to the where Deer Run starts, there's actually a path that goes in and there's open space in the center there and it's that's the open space it's owned by the town and we um we would probably you know it would, it would have to fall into all the parameters for a cell tower but they have to go through this process because it's a town own the property anything else on article 28 uh lady over here with her hand raised next to uh, uh sal Mary Ann Simone, dear run. Um, that's a horrible location. That's, 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 not, that's not what's before us right now, really. What's before us is just for the town to see if they can even, Please, they can even do it. Um, it, it's, it is part, when we did the overlay district for the wireless cell phone, the district, we included all town properties just to, for the possibility of providing the town with that option, both for town facilities and or income. But it, it's not a done deal. It's just we put all of the town properties and then we had a wireless district. So it, it just happens to fall in there and one of the carriers is looking at it. So we, you know, it's up to the, the, town, the board of selectmen whether they want to consider it or not. Uh, Voting on allowing the board of selectmen to be able to get an S of bid. 
Right. We, right. We, we would need authorization to enter into a lease with any carrier that bids on this and gets a permit from the planning board. So without town meeting approval, we would not go through that process and expend that effort and attorney's fees and all the other documents in preparing an RFP. And then from there, how do town people get have input into the location of it? The, uh, the carrier, would, we would put all town parcels that are listed under the overlay district because the, there is interest also, I believe, uh, on the school parcel, but this is the the only vendor that has expressed interest. So once something's filed, they would have to file with the planning board and people who are in an area that would uh, be abutters would be notified by certified mail to go and attend that hearing and give their input. Okay, okay. Art Mel. Well, okay. Uh, and uh, gentleman down here. Uh, is it, uh, two questions, is it known uh, which carrier is asking this? And two, second, uh, is it known whether uh, multiple carriers could, um, could uh, build towers, for example? Um, it, it's uh, Verizon Wireless is the carrier. And the way the planning board has this uh, zoning bylaw district set up, if uh, one carrier puts a tower up, then other carriers would be entitled to work an agreement out with them to co-locate. Oh, okay, uh, lady up, up back. Uh, Allie, can we get the microphone back up to? Uh... Karen's my help. If you're saying that this can be done on any of the town owned properties, why did you specifically put in here 13 Liberty Lane and the land off of Foster Road? If the land off of Foster Road is right smack dab in the middle of a residential neighborhood of about 200 homes. The wireless carrier identified that geographical area of town as needing the uh, improved cellular service. They came to us. Okay. But you just told Mrs. Simone that this is going to be looked at at all the property in Southwest, but you have two, two specific pieces of property listed here. So what is it? Is it these two specific properties, or is it the whole town? Because if it's a whole town that you're looking at to be able to lease, you need to rework this. Okay, uh, uh, Roz, uh, for a response. Uh, and then I'll recognize you over here. I, I don't know if this, this helps at all, but when they do come before us for their application, they have to prove to us that they add a significant amount of coverage. So they can't just come and say, you know, we want to put one over here and one over here. We have denied cell tower applications in the past because they have not fallen within the bylaw and added adequate, you know, more coverage. Um, we have really tried to restrict the number of them. As they said, the, the carrier probably identified that location in all their studies and complaints or whatever, people saying, my calls drop. For whatever reason, they're looking at that area. Probably because of all the residents. So, so, you know, I mean, we'll do our best to try to, you know, make sure that but it, it's not a done. It, you guys can you're vote on it and see what you want to do. You're saying two different things. You're saying it's two different processes. And you're saying two specific processes. Okay, we're going to move on. Uh, lady over here, I'm going to recognize, so let's get a microphone for her. Uh, Elaine Regazio, 3101. Um, I wonder if there might be a better location Okay, and now the gentleman in the blue shirt in the middle, and then we'll come back over here. I think there might be a little confusion. If I understand you correctly, you guys put out a map of the places in the town that were available, and then the cellular company said those two interest me. Is that what's happened here? So it's not, we're not trying to be misled. They just identified to the cellular carriers these sites are available, and the cellular carriers said these two are appealing to us. And so that's, is, is that correct? Is why we look at these two leases? Exactly. And, and, it's, and, just, and just to clarify a little bit, these two are contiguous parcels. The reason why there's two is because there's access to the larger piece. One piece is only 0.13 acres or something extremely small to get access to it. And, and you're exactly right as to all the property that's available, this is one that was targeted. And, 
make sense to the cell tower, we need to be where the congestion is. It would be great if we put them in the middle of nowhere, but don't leave them. So I, I understand the need. Okay, uh, Mr. Wally. Chair Wally, Foster Road, we need, we need better service on Foster Road, and I'd like to move the question. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I am going, I'm not even going to uh, take a vote. I think we uh, adequately discussed the <coughs> article here. Uh, requires a majority vote. Uh, so all in favor of Article 28, please say aye. Aye. And those opposed, say no. No. Uh, that's carried by a majority, a strong majority. Uh, but uh, I do uh, recognize the dissension there. Uh, but that brings us to the end of the board. We have two other items of business here before you pack up and leave. Again, I want to thank the uh, uh, high school folks for helping us out with microphones. They've got a good workout here tonight. Uh, thank you, Glenn.